Dallas making an excellent reading given to Rodney Lewis, and he cuts it back against the grain and gets good yardage. Troy Ruffett knocked him down. Troy was the WAC Defensive Player of the Week last week. So the Air Force with its first first down of the game. They're on their own 37-yard line now. No score were the first quarter of the football game. Dallas again gets to his fullback, and again up the middle. He's still on his feet to the 40, down to the 35, cotton behind at the UTEP 34-yard line by Ken Stolley. That's quite a run by uh, Rodney Lewis. That was a great run. Watch 62 just on the bottom of your screen. Steve Wilson, the right guard, he gets out there in front of Rodney Lewis. He Dallas makes the read, and he's got a nice little escort down the field there with the right side of that line. That was a 34-yard gain for Rodney Lewis, and he showed us that he can turn on the speed once he hits that hole. Lewis, number two in the whack and rushing, averaging just under 100 yards a game. First down, Air Force. Here we go up the middle again. It's a change, however. It's Jason Jones. The ball carrier this time, and he has another three or four yards. The young man who was a high school superstar and very, very good speed. Now Jason Jones is a sprinter uh, uh, in track. He was a sprinter in high school. He runs 100 meters and about 10-3, so he he uh, can really scoot. And they, as you talk to him, he's a, as you talk to the coaches, he's a young player that they're very, very excited about because he has that speed to break one at any time. Gains four yards. It's second and six for the Air Force on the 25-yard line. UTEP dancing around, making some changes along the line defensively. Here's Dallas with the ball. This time they try the same thing, and there's nothing doing it. The ball carrier again, Jason Jones, and hit hard right in the middle. I think it was Ross Purity. Well, that's, that's the first option of the triple option that Air Force runs, and if you can't, if you don't take away that fullback, it's going to be a long afternoon because they'll they'll continue to give it to that fullback until they, until they take it away. And uh, obviously, uh, they've been successful with that fullback give when Ronnie Lewis is one of the top uh, rushers in the WAC with 98 yards a game. Third and five for the Air Force. The ball on the 24-yard line of the UTEP Miners. Dallas with the football. Gives again to Jones, uh, slant to the left side, and again, it's well covered by Utah, making the hit number 46. As they say, they've made a lot of changes in their uh, defensive line. Uh, line That's Colony by uh, They had two young men who uh, quit the team this uh, week, Anthony Poppy and uh, Shane uh, Skarkey, both just decided they didn't want to play football anymore. Yes, they got tired of it sometimes it gets to be a long, long season, even, even early season, they uh, don't get to concentrate on their schoolwork, and they decided that they'd had enough. Here's Joe Wood, who's four or five on field goals this year, trying one for the Air Force Academy, and it is good. And so we have the first score of the football game. The first score with uh, Air Force Academy taking the lead here in the first period by a score of three to nothing. This is the Blue and White Network. 8.36 left to go in the first period of this football game, and now the Air Force leads by a score of 3-0. A couple of good defensive plays for uh, the UTEP Miners. Doug Morgan was in on the, both of those stops that uh, caused Air Force to go for the field goal rather than the touchdown. Well, Air Force went to the fullback uh, dive just a couple times too, too many that time. D. Dallas, a couple of mistakes on the reason. He doesn't do that very often, but uh, they gave it the fullback, and UTEP was there waiting with open arms for, uh, for Jason Jones and Rodney Lewis on that drive. Joe Wood to kick off for the Air Force Academy. Ricky Lopez is one of them back deep for the Air Force, and the other is uh, Clarence C.A. Here's the kick. It's a short one, and it's fumbled and rolls around on the near sidelines. Who's got that football? Air Force Academy thinks that they do, and if they do, that will be a tremendous early break in the football game. They're convinced they do. Now, wait a minute. The officials are pointing the other way, however. They do. The officials say that UTEP has it. What the way the Air Force is acting, Blaine, I thought they had the ball. They were all signaling they had. Of course, maybe they're just trying to uh, to uh, get the official to uh, go their way. The uh, number 87 for UTEP, who is uh, who we don't have in the program for a number, was uh, running back and trying to catch the ball over his shoulder, like, almost like he was going out for a pass. He couldn't feel the ball, and uh, fortunately for UTEP, they got on the ball. The uh, they back the people that were behind him came up and covered it for him. First and ten miners on the 18 yard line. That's fumbled. It's still free there. I thought that uh, Gasser would drop on it immediately, but some of uh, how it got away from him, but I think UTEP has it anyway. They'll lose yardage on it. But two plays in a row that they've mishandled the football then. One of the kick and one on a run. Gasser came out and uh, looks like he was, gonna, he was going to fake to the fullback, Evans, except for he got the ball out a little too far and hit Evans on the hip. And uh, so I lose two yards. Second down and 12 at the 16-yard line. 
Air Force ahead, 3 0, midway through the first quarter. Gasser, one setback. He's back to pass, looks down the sidelines, throws. It's incomplete. Incomplete at the 28 yard line. Again, that time it looked like uh, Gasser and the receiver had cross signals. Either that or Gasser threw a horrible ball. Faison was covering. It was intended for Reggie Barrett. Reggie Barrett was running a streak up the sideline. He was going straight up the sideline. He was going to come back. Gasser dropped back and threw it like he thought uh, thought Barrett was going to run it out. So uh, either that was a real, real bad throw or they had their signals crossed up. Gasser has completed 57% of his passes so far this year. Now they have third and 12. But if they don't get a first down, they're going to lose field position badly. Gasser dropping straight back to throw, being chased, rolling to the right side, and now gets the pass off downfield, tipped away. It's incomplete. Intended for Barrett. Faison was covering again, along with Pat, uh, or it was Pat uh, McNellis, who put the pressure on Gasser. And the pass is incomplete, and so they will be forced to punt once again. That was not a bad throw. Barrett had the man by a step, and uh, Gasser came out running to his right. Made a nice throw, but what a defensive play for the Falcons. It made up the ground while the ball was in the air and knocked that down, and uh, just a great defensive effort. Lance Brownlee is back to uh, punt. The snap is over his head into the end zone. He's chasing a foul on the football. That's going to be a safety. So the Air Force Academy put some pressure on, but uh, to cover it nicely, but it was simply a bad snap into the end zone. I mean, the punter probably did the wise thing by falling on the ball many times that a punter will go back there and try to make a play out of it. And here you have a look at it. Just a bad snap, high into the right. Couldn't get his hands on it. He made a good play. You're going to see where he's just going to dive on the football in the end zone. Earl Scott's right on top of him. What can happen is if that punter decides that he wants to, to make a play and tries to pick the ball up, he can end up fumbling it and it can turn, turn out to be a touchdown. It's better to give up two points, get the free kick, rather than to give up six on a, on a miscue like that. So it's now five to nothing with Air Force leading. Well, you, uh, right now, there's no doubt that the, uh, you can feel that momentum, whatever you want to call it, is, is on Air Force's side. They're, they're just sort of taking charge of this football game very early. You know, the, the, the momentum, while it's on Air Force side at this time, I don't think Air Force is really completely in sync at this point. Their offense not running uh, quite as smooth as it has early. There's a look at Coach Lee. He's got to be a little bit concerned about what's going on as far as the momentum uh, here early in the game. But, uh, but the neither team really That's running true. run real smooth right now. Well, I think Air Force, they are, uh, UTEP has not been in sync at all. They fumbled the ball on the kickoff. They fumbled the first handoff. They've misfired on passes. Now they get a free kick from the 20-yard line. It's taken at the 25, the 30, the 35, up to midfield to the 50, and down to the 45-yard line of UTEP. So the Air Force Academy will have the ball. Larry Bonner making the stop, and it was Ron Graves, a real speedster, who took that kick and ran it right up the middle. We might mention, Jay, that Ron Gray came to the Air Force Academy as an option quarterback, and he very well may be the starter next year when D. Dallas uh, graduates, and that will be a big loss. But as you can see, Ron Gray has some outstanding speed. He also is a sprinter. And uh, he'll add a dimension to, to the team next year with his with his speed, and he's going to be a good one. Air Force leading 5 to nothing, And they have the football, first and 10, on the UTEP 45. That's a handoff. Gave it to the first man, Rodney Lewis, his fullback. And he sort of bent over backwards quickly by the middle of that UTEP line. You know, Air Force lost several. They lost five in a row at the end of the year last year. And they kind of set a goal this year. They wanted to beat those teams and beat them. They've already taken care of a couple of them. And this is one of them they'd like to, to uh, take care of today. That's right. Uh, UTEP beat uh, Air Force last year late in the season in a nail-biter. And uh, Air Force wanted to get even here at their home field this year. Getting a little over a year. I tell it sucking the bad nine. Air Force Academy with the football. Dallas still with the ball, running it himself. Cuts inside of that seam. He's into the secondary. And oh, is he dangerous when he does that? He's down to the 22-yard line. He just kind of dances out there. You never get a good look on him. Larry Bonner finally does bring him down, the right cornerback. He's one of the best cutback runners I've ever seen, Jay. I put him in the class, and this, this is really saying something. But with O.J. Simpson, as far as his ability to cut back, once he turns that corner, it's electrifying. Watch this cutback. He freezes those defensive backs and those secondary people as he gets into the secondary and is able to cut on a dime, and they can't make those kinds of cuts. They don't know where, where D is going to go, and it's exciting every time he turns that corner. First down Air Force on the UTEP 22-yard line. A handoff on the left side, just uh, straight ahead is Greg Johnson, the left halfback, a senior from San Antonio and one of the best in the WAC. 
he's an outstanding uh, back, and he, he has a knack for getting in the end zone, Jay. One of the leading scorers of all time for Air Force, one of the top scorers in the WAC. If you get close to that end zone, give it to Greg Johnson. He'll get it in there for you. Like we talk about Dallas, maybe one of the best, if not the best, to ever play. He, 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 too, is one of the best running backs to ever play at the Air Force. He gained five on that one, second and five for the Falcons. They're leading five to nothing, and they have the ball now on the 18-yard line. Dallas fakes it, still has it himself, coming out wide. There's the pit back, knocked out of bounds, a gain of a yard, maybe two yards this time. So they forced him into the third option, pitched it back to Greg Johnson. O.T. Thomas covering out there for the Miners from Utah. And UTEP did a good job that time. First they took away the fullback option, and then Ken Sally, that great linebacker for the UTEP Miners who led the team in tackles last year, came up took D. Dallas, and then it was all on O.T. Thomas's shoulders to get up and take the pitch man, and he did a nice job hitting Greg Johnson's legs out from under him. You might mention that Ron Gray has been in the backfield for this drive, the former quarterback playing right halfback for the Falcons. When he's in there, there's always a threat that they'll run the halfback option pass, pitch it out to Ron Gray deep and throw that pass. They've done that before. Third and three. Dallas looks things over and immediately calls timeout. It was something was the uh, clock about to run out. One second left. So the score is 5 nothing. Air Force Academy leading UTEP about five minutes to go in the first quarter. Third down, three yards to go for the Air Force Academy. D. Dallas had his season for records. That 11.7 that yards of carry is amazing. Here he goes. That's Dallas down the sidelines. He's got the first down. And again, it looked like they had him for a loss. They wouldn't make the first down yardage, but he gets it. Forcing him out of bounds was Dennis Austin, the left hand. And so Air Force is going to have first down inside the 10-yard line. In fact, it will be inside the 5-yard line. He, he's fun to watch. He picks his way through there. And there you saw just on the left side of your screen, one of the reasons this offense is so successful, that's because the lead backs block like crazy on that. You saw Ron Gray, number four, go and take the defensive back out, allowing D. Dallas to cut up and use his speed to get up the sideline for good yardage. First and goal for Air Force on the UTEP four-yard line. Air Force leading 5-0. We're in the first quarter of the football game. He downs the quarterback, Heisman candidate. Great athlete, a fine young man. He has the football. And off the left side, it's close to the first down, but, or the touchdown, but not quite. Greg Johnson just uh, moving straight ahead. Scored 106 points last year for the Falcons. Tackled by Lorenzo Constantini, who has moved up to the starting nose guard position in this game, along with uh, Iacopo on that stop. You might mention that Raymond Hill, who was their starting nose guard, has moved out the tackle to take the place of, of one of the gentlemen that quit the team this past week. And that's why Constantino's in there, and they hope that he'll do a good job for him. Second down, about a half yard for a touchdown for the Falcons to the Air Force Academy. Dallas will sneak for himself. He's got it. He just uh, sort of dropped his head, followed the center, and was over the goal line for the TD. That's the 10th touchdown of the year for D. Dallas. He's one of the leading scorers in the nation. You know, take a look at it. Nothing fancy about this. D. Dallas just gets lower than the defense, dives into the end zone, only had a yard to go. That gives D. Dallas 43 yards rushing on the day. And uh, Rodney Lewis also having a good game. He's got 49 already. So that drive, Air Force looked sharp. Those first two drives, a little rusty. That drive, Air Force's offense was run to perfection. D. Dallas in high gear now and ready to go. With all the statistics that Dallas has, he's second in the nation in scoring. And picks up another touchdown there. Here's the left-footed kick for the extra point, and it is good by uh, Joe Wood, who is now 18 out of 19 on the season. We have four and a half minutes left to play in the first quarter of this football game, and the Air Force Academy has jumped ahead by a score of 12 to nothing. You know, you mentioned uh, D. Dallas is, is uh, second in the nation in scoring. You might also mention he's second in the nation in rushing. But the Air Force Academy offense is number one team in the nation as far as rushing offense is concerned. And number two in total offense. So it's it's quite an offensive team. They really can move that football, especially when they're uh, uh, executing to perfection like they did on that last drive. Talking about David Lee, the new coach at UTEP, that he was an assistant uh, to Ken Hatfield. Guess who they play next week, Wayne? <laughs> they play, they Arkansas. play Arkansas, so it doesn't get any easier, does it, for UTEP? No, UTEP's got a tough schedule this year, and uh, that's a tough thing to play two schools that run the option back-to-back -back weeks, although I'm sure that he feels good about being able to prepare for two weeks for the option. They're at all this week for Air Force. Next week, uh, they play Arkansas, who also runs that option. They'll be a little more prepared for that game. Air Force Academy will be on the road next week playing Colorado State up in Fort Collins. And Colorado State plays a pretty good football this year, the new coach, Earl Bruce. 
back to kick is uh, Joe Wood and Clarence C.A. is back deep to receive for the Miners of UTEP. And the kick again is high and short. It'll come down at the 15-yard line. C.A. has it to the 25 and knocked off his feet around the 27-28 yard line. Good coverage that time by the Air Force coverage team. Uh, by such a short kick. If that had been a longer kick, they probably would have been able to get him back in the 18-19 yard uh, you know, range, but that was such a short kick. They've been involved in a couple games in recent years where that short kick was just over the on-rusting on charge. Let's take a look at that touchdown again, Jay. Nothing fancy, but that offensive line for uh, the Air Force Academy doing a nice job of getting penetration into the end zone. D. Dallas just kind of slides in through the hole in the bottom. UTEP, nothing to show offensively so far in this game. Here's a pass that's complete to the 35 up to the 40-yard line and knocked out of bounds at the 43-yard line. So there's the first completion of the game. Michael Jerry is making the tackle along with Rob uh, Litsky. And it's Marvin Hill, number 83, the big tight end, weighs 251 pounds. He Look is, at his size. He is a big boy, and he showed us that he has some good feet here because as he went out, uh, Gasser threw the ball a little bit behind him. He turned around, caught it on his inside, and turned it up. And I'll tell you what, if you're a defensive back, you don't like to see a tight end that size catch the ball out on the sideline and have a chance to turn it up and run you over. Nice job that time. Good throw, good catch. First down, it's a pitch back. They'll try to turn the left side. No game. The ball is fumbled. It's fumbled on the sidelines, and I think the Air Force Academy has it. They do. They do. The pitch back that time was to Scooter Murphy, and Randall Gladney hit him hard on the sidelines. And Randall Gladney's been having an outstanding year this year. He's been covering the field from sideline to sideline from his linebacker position. He hit uh, Menifee real hard, and his helmet hit right in the ball. Popped up in the air, and a lot of times that ball fly out of bounds. That time it just kind of sat it going and died yeah. right on the sideline. Kind of was a knuckleball, flew up, and just died right there on the sideline. And uh, boy, the brakes are really going against uh, El Paso at this point, and the momentum is really on Air Force's side of the ball right now. Brian Hill pulled in that uh, that fumble. You know, UTEP has had some difficulty here in the first quarter hanging on to the football. It's a third fumble. First down, Air Force, 39-yard line of UTEP. That's the, uh, oh, has he still got it? It's hard to, to tell where the ball is sometimes with these two young men. The handoff was to the fullback, Rodney Lewis, and tripped up at the line of scrimmage, fell forward for a couple of yards. 12-0, Air Force leading. Well, that was a good read that time by D. Dallas. There was a seam there, and he gave it to Rodney Lewis, but just as Rodney Lewis was about to break it, the nose guard, Lorenzo Constantini, stuck his arm out and got it just on his foot, and that's what knocked him down. Had he been a step further in the hole, he would have gone a long ways that time. Hey, Eric Faison is, recovered, is credited with the fumble recovery for the uh, Air Force Academy. Second down for the Falcons on the 35-yard line of Utah. Here you see D. Dallas' passing statistics. Here's the reverse. Coming back the other way. It's covered pretty well. No, he's inside the 30. 25 and knocked out of bounds at the 22-yard line. I thought they had him back near the line of scrimmage. Dan Zedroyk came around. Larry Bonner forced him out of bounds as they ran the reverse. And UTEP really was in good position. You'll see it here. Zedroy comes around from his wide receiver position. They fake like they're running the option to the left and pitch it back against the grain. UTEP okay, was smart. Covered. They stayed at home. But what Zedroy does is he doesn't slow up at all. He doesn't care if they're there. He's going to run right through the tackle. And as they try to arm tackle, and there's no way you can arm tackle somebody going full speed down the field. Dan Zedroy doing a nice job of accelerating through the tackle and got good yardage on that one when it should have been no gain. Three minutes to go in the first quarter. 12-0 Air Force. And the Falcons is threatening to score again. First down on the 18-yard line of the UTEP Miners. Dallas gives the ball. They're held up at the line of scrimmage, but then he just forces his way forward. That's Rodney Lewis, and Lewis has a good gainer out of what appeared to be a no-gainer. Dennis Austin finally pulled him down. That was unusual uh, for Air Force. Usually when they hand the ball to the fullback, it's a quick opener. And that time you see Rodney Lewis kind of broke it out to the outside and then cut off of his block. And look at the strength of Rodney Lewis's legs. He ran over the first tackler and then dragged the second two for an additional three yards. They got him right close to the first down marker, but they're just going to be about six inches short. They have 17 yards in the preceding play and nine on this one. So they're getting big chunks of yardage right now. Second down and less than a yard to go for the first down. And they're inside the 10-yard line now, leading already by a score of 12-0. Dallas with the ball, still has it. There's the pitch back, turning the corner. He will score easily. That is Chris Howard, who took the pitch back, but there's also a flag down on the play. So Howard gets into the end zone, which would make it 16-0. Correction, make it 18 nothing. but let's see what the and flag You're, you're going to see the penalty here on the replay. Watch what happens to D. Dallas after he pitches the ball. Well, he goes out of your screen, but you saw that the linebacker had a hold of D. Dallas' shirt, and he flung him to the ground. It's going to be a personal foul on El Paso. 
and uh, Dallas did a nice job of pitching that. I think that the, the linebacker was frustrated because he got to Dallas finally, and Dallas pitches the ball away, and that one's going to count. This year you have the option on a situation like this on the penalty, and you can take it on the uh, extra point attempt or on the kickoff. Air Force will take it on the kickoff. The, field, the touchdown is good by Howard, his third TD of the year, and it's now 18-0. Air Force leading, and they'll try the extra point. This is Joe Wood, who has a field goal, and he now has two. No, he misses it. He pulled it off to the right, so it is no good. So the score remains 18 to nothing for the Air Force Academy leading the UTEP Miners and Blaine so far. Anything that could go bad for UTEP has. It really has. They just have not executed well at all. And uh, as you mentioned, Jay, they've had a hard time holding on to the ball. Three fumbles, and they've lost every one. And uh, just nothing going right for them. But as quickly as things can go bad, they can turn around and go good. Uh, if Air Force lets down at all and gets confident that, they're, uh, that they've got the momentum, UTEP can come right back into this thing. A lot of other games getting underway today. Some early scorers, Navy and Citadel, are tied up 7-7 after one quarter of play. Here we have a look at the sidelines from for the UTEP Miners and David Lee, the UTEP head coach. Okay, let's take a look at that touchdown. D. Dallas comes down. Now watch. He has the pressure from the defensive uh, defensive linebacker coming across, pitches it out quickly, and uh, you, when you when you run that kind of a, a defense, you hope to get to the quarterback before he has a chance to gather himself and make the pitch. That time, though, nine yards into the end zone, Dallas able to get the pitch out there, and uh, then he had Emilio Pittman coming up from his uh, outside position there trying to stop Dallas, but disappointed and uh, probably frustrated, and he's the one that got that uh, unnecessary roughness or personal foul penalty. So Joe Wood will kick off again for the Air Force Academy. We've got Lopez and C.A. back deep. And they're up near the 10-yard line now because the kicks by Air Force so far have not been deep. Here's this one, and they bounce it along the ground, and it'll roll all the way into the end zone. It'll go back and be covered there by the Miners from UTEP, and we'll move the ball out to the 20-yard line. Well, they've had short the kicks zone. on the He's two kickoffs prior to this. This time, they just kick it along the ground. It goes all the way into the end zone. And there's a look at the scoring drive. Four plays, 38 yards. Air Force Academy taking advantage of the muffs of the fumble by uh, the UTEP Miners. Only took a minute and 35, and uh, Dallas pitching out to Howard for that nine-yarder. And, of course, uh, Wood missed the extra point. Here's Howard Gasser, quarterback, so he can get something cooking for the, uh, the Miners. The late handoff, sort of a scissors play on the inside. No game. They'll lose a yard. He gave it to the second man through there. I think it's Craig Evans' fullback, and Terry Walker met him head on. And that's a fine group of linebackers that Air Force Academy has this year. Terry Walker doing an outstanding job. Uh, Ladney having a good year. You can see Walker doing just what a linebacker is supposed to do. They pulled the right tackle out to block. Walker saw the hole beginning to open, stepped over to the side and filled that hole. That's his job as a linebacker. And then he showed you what a form tackle is all about. Craig Evans, a very versatile athlete. He was a quarterback, then a linebacker. Now it's a big fullback. Second down and 11 for UTEP. The pressure is on. Oh, they jammed him up and they've got him for a sack. He was hit immediately, bounced up, went back, looked, couldn't find anybody, then tried to scramble and they wrapped him up. And you can see Howard Gasser's inexperience on that one. It was an obvious blitz. He came up to the line of scrimmage. Everyone was on the line of scrimmage and the secondary was in a position to cover people man to man. When you're in that situation, you have to check to an audible that allows you to have the protection. You've got to get good depth on your drop and throw the ball and take advantage of that man-to-man -man coverage. Randall. That time, Gasser stayed with it. Randall Gladney got in his face, and there was nothing that he could do. And they lose more yardage. It is third down and 13 now for UTEP. They're unable to put anything together offensively. Gasser drops back, swings it over to the right side to Minifee, and he had to throw it quickly. It looked like maybe they were trying to set up a screen that time, but they had to pass the ball very quickly. Shannon Yates for Air Force was right on top of uh, Gasser. The throw was intended for a scooter Minifee, but it was too high. And Randall Gladney was right out there in Minifee's face. Had he caught that ball, uh, he would have had taken quite a shot. They'll have to punt again. Punter is Lance Brownley. Last time they were back here, the snap was over his head, went into the end zone for a safety. It's two in this time. The rush is on, but he gets the kick away. And it's a pretty good punt. It'll come all the way back to the 32-yard line. It's fielded there by Gray. And Gray is hemmed in right away and knocked out of bounds at the 37-yard line. There's Bobby Thomas. 
Bobby Thomas back there who took the punt Bobby Thomas and uh, to was forced out of bounds. Out of bounds. Correction on that. That was an excellent punt. Jay, the ball went up and turned over, had good hang time and good yards. And they had to rush on, too. Yeah, when you kick when you kick a ball that long, you really have to get good hang time or uh, you can't cover the punt. That time it had good hang time. A minute nine to go in the first quarter with Air Force leading 18 to nothing. So far, Jay, interesting statistic. UTEP has minus five yards rushing and 20 passing. Air Force Academy hasn't, hasn't uh, completed the ball, but they have 145 yards rushing already here. And they have the football right now on their own 38-yard line. It's fumbled. It's bouncing around. I think Air Force gets it, however. A little mix-up on the handoff that time, and now we see a fumble on the Falcon side, but they do keep possession. Coming up with the ball was Jason Jones. What, what happened that time is Raymond Hill, number 60, from his right tackle position, there you see him come in, slash down inside that time. It was a stunt where he came inside, and he hit the fullback and the quarterback as they were in their mesh area where they were making the exchange. That's one way to really mess up the... Uh, the uh, option attack is to get there before you're even able to make the read. And that time, uh, Raymond Hill, who's moved out from nose guard to tackle this week, uh, made an excellent play on the stunt that time. Matacopa was also there, helping to force that fumble. So there's no game. It's second and ten for the Air Force. With the football, is Dallas coming wide, slips through one man, gets over the 40, and gains about two, maybe three yards. Good example of making a little bit out of nothing. Ken Saleh is there to make the stop for uh, Utah. Time is running out here at the first quarter. The Air Force Academy, 18 points. UTEP has none. I don't think they'll get another play underway here before we end the quarter. That is the end of the first period with Air Force Academy ahead of UTEP by a score of 18 to nothing. This is the Blue and White Network. And next week, Jay, the Blue and White Network travels to Fort Collins, Colorado to, to uh, air the Air Force Colorado State game. That's Saturday, September 30th, next week. Check your local listings for that game. It should be a good one. Air Force Academy going against new coach Earl Bruce, formerly of Ohio State, uh, there in Fort Collins. And uh, I, I have a feeling that Earl Bruce is going to turn that program around, and we're going right. to hear from Colorado State in the future, Jay. Let's go with the second quarter of the football game. Air Force won the first quarter handily. They're ahead 13-0. The Falcons have third down and seven right now on their own 41. Dallas running the ball. He's back to pass. The pressure's there. He throws downfield. I think he threw it, uh, had to throw it quicker than he wanted to. Intended for Greg Johnson, and Air Force will have to punt the football. You know, we should point out, too, I don't think we did this in the first quarter, but the wind is blowing from our right to left or towards the north, and it's pretty stiff breeze at times, which I'm sure is one of the reasons you saw the short kickoffs by Air Force in the first quarter as they were just trying to take advantage or, you know, come up with some way to uh, negate that win. Okay, we have the punting situation then for the Air Force Academy. Eric Olson back to kick from his own 30-yard line. Gets it up fairly high, kicks it away from the receivers and bounces at the 17-yard line. And UTEP will let the ball roll dead at that point. It's well covered by Air Force. It'll be down on the 14-yard line, kicking with the winner. That was an excellent kick. In fact, it's kind of, you know, sometimes it's better to be lucky than good, and he punted it up. Uh, the return man came over, anticipating the bounce to go to the right, to the right and it bounced back the other way away from him, and uh, Air Force able to cover that. So other than the right at the start of the game on the first series, when uh, UTEP had good field position, they have bad position now. There you have a look at Howard Gasser's stats for the year. Pretty impressive, 57% of his passes, but today not having too much luck. And now he tries to pass out of the uh, right flat, and the pass is batted away by Randall Gladney, who's looking right in his face mask. Randall Gladney is having a heck of a game today, Jay. He's been involved in almost every tackle when there's been a play uh, to the outside. He's been there, a play on the inside. He's been there, he's running the field, and, uh, and he's been the defensive leader this year. And uh, he's, he's doing it again today. He started every game for two years. Second team all whack last year. Second on the team in tackles last year. We have a second and ten for UTEP on their own 14-yard line. They've been unable to generate anything in the way of offense here in the first half of the football game. Gasser back to throw again. Fairly good protection. Swings it over and it's dropped. That was in back of the line of scrimmage, actually, where the pass was thrown. Intended for his fullback, Craig Evans. That time Gasser dropped back. He was trying to throw the ball upfield to his flanker on an out. And Evans was just his checkoff receiver, his safety valve, sitting over there in case everyone was covered. And Air Force had excellent coverage in the secondary. But what Gasser's got to learn is when a guy's 10 yards away from you, 
you can't throw it 95 miles an hour at him or he's not going to be able to catch the football. And, uh, that's twice he's done that. He's a big kid, 6'2", 216 pounds, and he's got a lot of arm strength, but he's got to learn to control that arm strength and have a little bit of touch on the ball for those short balls. Guys are 2 of 8 for 20 yards passing. The Falcons have a field goal, a couple of touchdowns of safety. They've recovered fumbles all here in the first half. Gasser, he didn't see him coming, but he got away from the blind side. Now scrambling up the middle and will be dropped at the 12-yard line. It looked like uh, Gladney had Gasser, but he slipped away, ran back up the middle, and then he came back and got him anyway. Randall Gladney that time. He came full speed, and right now at this point, he's on the right side of the screen. He can't see Nobody it. Locks him. He's licking his chops. He's saying, I'm going to kill this guy. He doesn't even know I'm coming. But uh, Gasser just felt him. And sometimes as a quarterback, he can feel pressure coming from the backside, and at the last second, he ducked, and that's what allowed him to get away. Flags go down on the punt. And the ball goes out of bounds up near the 45-yard line. So there's a flag back at the 15-yard line, one at the 10-yard line, and back at the 45-yard line. So they're all over the place. 18-0 Air Force leading. We're one minute into the second quarter of this football game. The officials all have to get together for a conference to sort this out. When there's three flags thrown, you have to decide which one takes precedent, which one's the most yards. UTEP says it's against Air Force. Here's the official. The official looked confused. He wasn't sure which he wasn't sure which way to point. And that is substitute infraction. We don't see that call very often. Oh, the old substitute infraction call. Yeah, right? yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but they probably put a person that was a, an illegal number on the offensive line to cover the call or, or to. Except for that was on defense. They called it on Air Force. You can have any illegal substitution. Oh, here's here's something that can happen too. Now that I'm thinking about it, if a person reports in. You can't uh, go in and come out on the same play. That's maybe what happened. Somebody came out and went back in. Somebody went in and came back out before the play ever started. The three officials dropped flags on it. Here's the call. Let's see. Still fourth down. It's a five-yard penalty, so it's still fourth down. Yeah, that's what we see all the time, Jay, that substitution <laughs> infraction. <laughs> punter back there. A barefooted punter. Never could see how they could do that one. Not in this kind of weather. When it's 39 degrees, it would seem like your foot would break off as you hit the ball. Here's the snap right to him. Here's the punt. Gets it away, and it'll be taken on a sliding catch at the 45-yard line of UTEP. So actually, Air Force gained about 10 yards on that. 18-0, Air Force leading in the second quarter. This is the Blue and White Network. Air Force Academy ahead 18-0 and taking advantage of uh, every break so far in the game. And they've really stymied this uh, UTEP minor team. Uh, Blaine Gasser does not seem to have really opened up or loosened up out there. It seems kind of stiff. He's very tentative out there and he's aiming the ball. And, and people say, what's wrong with that? You can't aim the football. You have to throw it and lead the people. You start to aim it, you end up throwing the ball behind him. First down Falcons on the UTEP 47-yard line. And that's the... Uh, Fullback with the football, stumbling his way forward to the 32-yard line, Jason Jones. And they're excited about the future of that young man, Jason Jones. You see that he has excellent leg strength. He just walked right through two tackles. He's it's just the option for. again. Full, full back dive. They give it to him right out behind that, that uh, excellent offensive line. He walks right through three tackles and almost... They call that elephanting. When you put your arm down like a trunk and try to get yourself up the field, you did a good job of getting an extra four yards by elephanting his way down the field. Or maybe a Pittman stopped him. It looked like he kind of went through a picket fence or something at the line of scrimmage. Had to step through a lot of defensive players, and then he had some uh, running room. First down at the 32-yard line for the Air Force. Dallas fakes now the pitch track. Coming wide to the left side, around to the 20, and knocked out of bounds at the 15-yard line. Boy, they just keep coming at you from every direction. Cannon and Pittman making the tackle for UTEP. The ball carrier is Chris Howard, who scored the last touchdown for the Falcons. He's a junior from Plano, Texas. This is the read again. D. Dallas reads. He sees the fullback. Gives not there. Comes down the line. Makes the end. Commit to him and gets the pitch out there. And, you know, Fisher DeBerry says that it's just as hard to complete a pitch as it is to throw a pass. And he feels like option teams should be able to get credit or quarterbacks for their pitch yardage. And uh, D. Dow's doing a nice job of pitching out to Chris Howard for a, a cool 17 yards that time. And it's to the 16-yard line. Dallas with the football. The pitch back again. This time, knocked out of bounds. They'll lose yardage on this one. Knocking uh, Chris Howard out of bounds was Ken Sully. When you decide as a defense that what you're going to do is take 
the quarterback out of the offense by coming down on him like UTEP has the last two plays. You really have to be conscious of that pitch back. Your defensive backs and your linebackers have to get out there and cover that pitch back. They haven't done it until this time when Ken Sally showed us his uh, speed from his inside back position to get out there and cover him on the pitch. Sally's well, an all rock performer. Played all 12 games last year. He's a very, very good athlete. They lost the yard at second and 11. Dallas gives it right up the middle, and there's nothing doing this time. No gain whatsoever to uh, Ron Gray, his sophomore running back. He's met right at the line of scrimmage. He just didn't open at all. Right now, uh, Air Force Academy's racked up 180 yards rushing. UTEP has minus seven. It's a glaring statistic. Doug Morgan led the defensive charge. Here's another good football player, a senior from Pittsburgh, former walk-on. Black honorable mention last year. So it's third down. They got a yard of that one. Third and ten at the 15-yard line. Dallas may be changing things. So straightens up. Looking over that UTEP defense. Now he's ready. Takes it. Still has it. Comes out wide. There's the pitch back. That's Johnson. Johnson turns the corner. Touchdown. Boy, I thought they had it strung out that time, but they did not. They tried to string it out. You can credit D. Dallas for that touchdown because he he forced them to commit to him. They were trying to string the play out. D. Dallas comes down the line. They want to force him into the sideline, but watch what he does. He forces upfield, steps at the defender so that they have to take him. Either they're going to take him or he's going to score, which opens up the pitch lane for Greg Johnson. He puts the pitch right on Johnson, who gets in easily. And many people here at the academy will say that Greg Johnson may be the best they've ever had at that position. He's a left halfback, number six in the WAC and rushing this year, scored 106 points last year, a second-team WAC performer. You might mention, I went back and did an Army Air Force game last year. His brother plays at Army, and his sister goes to the Naval Academy. Is that right? Yes. Joe Wood kicks the extra point, so there's time out of the field with the score. Air Force 25, and UTEP nothing. This is a golfer. Well, right now, Air Force Academy dominating in all aspects of the game, and Blaine, that stat tells a lot. Yes, they really are dominating. Air Force Academy, 196 total yards to 13 for UTEP. Nine first downs for the Academy, one for El Paso. So uh, they're dominating not only on the scoreboard, but statistically as well. Air Force will kick off, and will have the wind to their back right now. Should help on this kick. Here's Wood's kick. Kicks it up high enough into the wind and it'll come down about three yards into the end zone. It looks like they expected that near the five-yard line. Clarence C.A. back to get it. And you can certainly say at this point too, Blaine, that uh, D. Dallas is doing anything that'll hurt his chances for to win the Heisman Trophy. I think he really is seriously a legitimate candidate this year. Well, he is. Let's take a look at that scoring drive. Five plays, 47 yards, just took a minute and 25. They don't take long to score even though they're a running team. They move the ball up quickly. 11, 12, 15, 20 yards in a crack. And uh, D. Dow's doing an excellent job of reading and pitching the ball in that last one. UTEP trying to get something going offensively. Two men split wide to the right. Eye formation. Back to throw is Gasser. Faked it up the middle. Throws it up the middle. And it's caught at the 30-yard line. Going high to make the grab for the uh, UTEP team it is Barrett. Reggie Barrett the, from Corpus Christi, the split end. He's tackled by Bobby Thomas. That time, uh, Gasser actually sat and looked calm in the pocket. I'm sure that Coach Lee had a talk with him. They are just running what's called a comeback route. You run straight at the sideline, Reggie Barrett, going like he was going to go on a streak, get the defensive back to turn his hips and start to run with you, and then he come back to the sideline, and Gasser put the ball on. Went out of bounds at the 29-yard line, a nine-yard game, second and one. Gasser, the quarterback, one setback this time, three men wide to the left. He goes right up the middle, and they have the yardage for the first down, but that's about all. Craig Evans, the fullback, is tackled immediately, uh, immediately by Lane Bean, a junior defensive tackle from Air Force. So UTEP has a first down, one of their few. That's only their second first down here in the first half, just over the 30. Lane Bean made a nice play there, but again, standing right over the, the back as he went down with Randall Gladden. He's had two sacks so far, broke up a pass, two tackles, and he's been around the ball in every play. He's been outstanding. First down call, three men wide to the left again. One set back. Evans, Gasser back to throw, some pressure. Now gets the pass off. It's caught at the 35-yard line. They'll swarm all over him at the 36. But there is some gain on that play. Four, maybe five yards. Good job defensively. UTEP just going down. What they're trying to do is find the seams in the zone. 
The receiver goes out, gets halfway in between two defenders in the zone, and Gasser puts the ball on him. Good job of zone coverage by Air Force that time. They were all where they were supposed to be. They kept the receiver underneath him, and they let, let him catch the ball. He may have just a little bit too much cushion, but came up and made the tackle before he got a big game. Reggie Barrett got it again, Jerry's, and uh, he'll end the stop. So we have second down, a little over five yards to go for the first down. For UTEP, trying to put together the first drive of the game. Off to the left side on a handoff straight ahead. A gain of a couple. Larry Sims, the ball carrier, and Brian Hill, the tackler for Air Force. Sims with his first carry. He's only a freshman, a hometown boy for the Miners. He's from El Paso. That wasn't anything fancy about that one. Just straight into the line. UTEP trying to take advantage of their size. Um, they are a bigger team than Air Force, but Air Force is scrappy, and they'll come at you. And, uh, you know, we, we came over with the Blue and White Network and did uh, Air Force's first game. And uh, against San Diego State, and I was wondering about their defense, but since then, Wyoming, Northwestern this week, they have really come together and playing some good defense as a team. They're down two and a half. It's a pass right over the middle. It's caught. He threaded the needle that time and gets it up to the 48-yard line. It'll be a first down for the uh, Miners. The catch by number 83, Marvin Hill, the tight end. The big guy, Mark Lyons, hit him first of all. We mentioned earlier, Hill, 251-pound senior. Gas are looking a lot more composed now in this drive than he has. Like I said, I'm sure Coach Bobley told him, hey, have fun out there. You're so tight. And that time he just had his tight end going and down and out. And hit him right in between the zone. And uh, Gas are starting to throw the ball the way he can. Walker and Lyons also in on the stop. First down at midfield now for the Utah Miners. Gasser gives to the left side to Sims, and Sims stopped right at the line of scrimmage. Trying to mix the plays up. Pat um, McNellis. The uh, first man to hit him from the Air Force Academy. No gain. It'll be second down and ten. Same play that UTEP ran two plays ago. You know, McNellis made the tackle, but he got to credit Terry Walker, the linebacker, for coming in, closing that hole, taking the blocker out, which allowed the back nowhere to go. 9.23 to go in the first half of the game. Air Force Academy leading in the football game by a score of 25 for Metro. Gasser rolling out to the left, gets the pass out, kind of a wobbly one, it's completed on the sidelines of her, and knocked out of bounds at the 41-yard line right in front of the Falcon bench. Clarence C.A. caught it, and Mike Jury forced him out of bounds. What set that up for Clarence C.A. was this play-action fake. They fake like they're going to run a sprint and draw. Gasser has C.A. just running a little hitch out on the sideline. Just a quick little out, and uh, because of the play-action, Jury's was a little bit off of him, coming in a little bit, and it allowed C.A. to make the play. First, the same drive of the game for the Miners from UTEP then as they're on the move. They're down by 25 points, however. They have the ball in Air Force territory at the 41-yard line. Gasser's going to call a timeout. They looked across the line of scrimmage. In fact, his fullback stepped forward, Craig Evans, and said something to him. He looked over to his coaches and called timeout. This is the Blue and White Network. UTEP with the ball on the 41-yard line of the Air Force Academy. They send Lopez in motion to the left. Gasser back to throw. Throws down the sidelines. He's got a man there. It's caught at the 13-yard line, and that's Barrett, who was open down the sidelines. Gasser hung it up, and he ran under it. Bobby Thomas covering. That time, uh, Barrett just ran up the sideline, and uh, Gasser's starting to settle in now. He threw that ball. He had a nice touch on it to get it over the underneath defensive back, but had he been able to lead Barrett just a little bit more, that was a sure score. The Air Force Academy had two people deep in zone coverage that time, one on each hash mark in the middle of the field, so there was nobody in the deep outside third where Barrett ran his streak. And the gasser read that as he came up to throw the ball and threw it out there to the weakness in that defense. Excellent read and a good catch by Barrett. Barrett's wide to the right. He was the leading receiver on this team last year. Gasser back to throw, throws for a spot, and it's incomplete. You could see he just stepped back, looked over, and then threw downfield intended for Lopez. And he was throwing for a spot. Lopez couldn't quite get to where the ball was, covered by Mike Juries. It's called a fade route, and it's, it's just all time. And the quarterback just takes one step and tosses it up to the corner. And it's the job of the receiver to get to the corner. Watch. Just one step, throw it up there, and you hope that that um, receiver can run under the ball. Sometimes that's hard to time out to the wide side of the field because it's such a long throw. Most of the time, you'll see teams run that fade. If they're in the middle of the field, it doesn't matter. But if they're on the hash, a lot of times they'll throw that to the short side of the field because it makes it an easier throw. He's got two men wide to the left. Barrett is one of them. He's been uh, making all the grabs in his drive. Gasser fakes it, gives up the middle to his fullback. 
and it looked like it was going to open up and then it closed in a hurry. That's big Craig Evans and it's Terry Walker who came over with help from Shannon Yates to shut it off. For a moment it looked like Evans might go. Terry Walker, another one of those good linebackers for uh, the Air Force Academy. Not big backers, Walker checking in at 207. Gladney's at 200 pounds, but they're active and they're quick. And you can see him fill, he scrapes across and fills right where he's supposed to, and that's a sure tackle. Right in the middle of the numbers, facing the middle of the numbers, wraps up and takes him back. That was just a pure form tackle. Third and goal on the six yard line for the Miners of Utah. Gasser back trying to throw for a TD right here. Gantz throws, he's got it! Right in the middle of the field, he waited, it opened up and he hit Larry Sims for the touchdown. There's a flag down in the end zone, however. So the officials confer, and uh, UTEP, I think they're saying, yeah, it's on the UTEP Miners. So it looked like maybe they had a touchdown. Now the officials are talking things over. Air Force is saying it's on UTEP. That's a pretty good play. Here's the call. It's defensive, or it's offensive pass interference. And I was watching the play, Jay, and that, you hate to see a call like that that had nothing to do with the play. Because they had a receiver running a fade to the right corner of the end zone, and that receiver ran into the defensive back and kind of hit him in the back to, or in the back of the end zone while the ball was being thrown over the middle. It had no effect on the play whatsoever. It's just not a very smart play by the receiver for El Paso to be hitting a man while the ball's in the air. Coach Lee's a little bit upset about it, too. It looked like they had a TD. It's a 15-yard penalty, and it's loss of down. So they not only do not get the touchdown, it drops them back. Now they uh, want to try a field goal. Won't be surprised to see him come back with the same kind of route. They just ran a clear out route over the middle and brought the back in underneath. And uh, Air Force drop were so deep, he was wide open. As they mark off the penalty, it's back to the 21-yard line. They only had uh, they had third down on the chain on the uh, down box. Now they mark it for it. That is loss of down. So rather than a touchdown, they're back to the 21-yard line. And will they bring in the field goal kicker? I think they will. That's got to be one of the harshest penalties in football, the offensive pass interference, because you, you do lose the down as well as the 15 yards. And uh, uh, the other baby being intentional grounding where you, where you lose the... They were moving so down, well, so. too. Dominique Cephalon is back to try the field goal from the 28-yard line, a 38-yard attempt. The kick is up, and I think it's off to the right. It is. It is no good. So Cephalon... Misses the field goal, and with the help of that penalty, the Air Force Academy hangs on to the shutout. It is still, still a 25 to nothing football game, and you know, that was a pretty good drive that UTEP put together. El Paso looked sharp on that drive. Gasser is settled in. He's starting to get into his drop, starting to read the defense and throw the ball, and he's not as tentative as he was, and the receivers started to catch the ball for him. Uh, really a different offense, that drive, than we saw for the whole first uh, part of the game. It's too bad that a penalty uh, that has no effect on the play whatsoever can affect the, the momentum of the game like that. And uh, El Paso could have uh, a little more wind in their sails at this point had they scored that touchdown. But uh, when it rains, it pours. They're fumbling, and now a crucial penalty uh, causes them problems. We've had about everything happen that way. A safety, they've lost the ball on fumbles. 7.55 left to go in the first half of the game. Dallas has now rushed for like 74 yards here in the first half, averaging 10.6 yards a carry. And here goes Air Force with the ball up the middle to start. That's the fullback, Rodney Lewis, the junior from Oklahoma City, number two rusher in the WAC, and he gains four. Tackled by Doug Morgan, who's played a good game for uh, the Texas El Paso team. Now, I, don't know, I don't know if you mentioned this, but uh, Rodney Lewis, number two in the WAC and rushing, and of course we know who number one is. And that's amazing to have number one and number two on the same team. Six yards to go. Second and six for the Falcons. Dallas fakes to the fullback. He still has the football. There's the pitch back. That's great. He got away. He's out to the 30, the 35, the 40, and pulled down at the 47-yard line. Looked like they had him. Ran right by a man. Ken Sale finally uh, tackled him up at midfield. And Another D good gainer. D. Dallas forced the defense to commit again, pitched it out to Gray, and you saw what kind of speed he has. Imagine him at quarterback next year after D. Dallas leaves. D forces the defender to come to him, pitches it out to Gray, makes a nice job, make, does a nice job of walking through two tackles there, keeps those legs moving. He's got some good speed and just collared down at the end after a 22-yard gain. First down, Air Force Academy up near mid midfield. They have the ball on their own 47-yard line. They're leading 25-0. 
They've just stopped a UTEP drive with the help of a penalty. Dallas with the ball, still has it. There's the pitch back to Gray. Gray is knocked out of bounds. Sort of tightrope uh, walks down to the 45-yard line, however, of UTEP before he finally was out of bounds. They not only are deceptive with this offense, but they're hard, they're, their runners are very, very hard to tackle. These runners will keep coming at you. They're strong kids. Ron Gray, he's not huge, but 5'10", 185 pounds, and uh, he'll take on those tacklers, lower that shoulder, and keep running. He's a hard runner. Morris Cole forced him out of bounds, along with Troy Ruffett. So Air Force has the ball second and two. Dallas gives it right up the middle to his fullback, and I think he has the yardage for the first down. That's Rodney Lewis again. So they uh, keep moving the football. And the way they're running their offense, uh, it takes the time off the clock. Well, they run a time off the clock. This game seems like it's flown by the first quarter. It seems like we barely got started when the first quarter was over. Now we only have uh, six minutes and 45 seconds left here in the half. And that's because that ground game of Air Force uh, really winds that clock down. It doesn't stop. No incomplete passes. I have time to get a quarter with Dallas at halftime. We have a special interview with him. First down with a 42-yard line. He rides it up the middle. He gave it to fullback up the middle. No game. It's one of the few times that D. Dallas has made the wrong read today. They had that fullback lane covered well. Armstrong uh, on the defensive line came up, big number 90, and able to uh, to uh, stuff that play. But you can see good penetration by the whole El Paso defensive line, and uh, uh, Dallas probably should have pulled that one out and went around and exercised the next two options on, on the triple option. One yard gain at second and nine, just short of the 40-yard line for the Falcons. Dallas out of the wishbone, keeps it this time. Goes back wide. There's the pitch and the option. Turning the corner. Five-yard game. Down inside the 35-yard line. I think it was Durham carrying him. Larry Bonner knocked him out of bounds. Air Force runs so Deshaun Durham, the ball carrier. Air Force runs this so well. You're going to see your UTEP defends this about as good as you can. They covered the fullback pitch. They caused the quarterback to get deep. They're stringing it out. And just at the last second, Dallas gets that pitch out there to Durham. And he's able to turn the ball to the sideline and get yardage. I thought that play was going to go for a loss. Durham is sophomore from Texas, Arlington, Texas. He was a JV starter last year. Third down and two. The ball is fumbled, and UTEP gets it. Fumble on the handoff. Trying to get it into the hands of his fullback, uh, Rodney Lewis, and Mike Stubblefield dropped on that football, and UTEP gets the ball on a turnover. That's the first time Air Force has turned it over today. And you don't see that very often from the Air Force Academy Falcons. Here they're just in the fullback quarterback mesh area, and uh, just a muff. I don't think Rodney Lewis thought he was going to get the ball that time. D. Dow selected to give it to him, and uh, he didn't have the handle on it. Well, Gasser moved his team downfield on a drive last time. The length of the field looked like they had a score and had a penalty in the end zone. Uh, nullify that probable touchdown. See if he can move him again. Here's Gasser, fakes it up the middle, back to throw, throws it out in the flat. It's caught out there by Lopez, and Lopez has an 11-yard gain to the 45-yard line, knocked out of bounds by Mike Jerry. Gas just throwing some arm strength on that one, Jay. He dropped back, threw that out to the wide side of the field. Ball, it's only a 11 or 12 yard gain on the throw. He actually had to throw the ball about 35 yards to get it out to the sideline. He just, a little play action, sets up and lets it go. Look at the distance on that ball. He didn't lob that up in the air at all. That was a surefire shot all the way out there, line drive. Ricky Lopez, mostly a return specialist last year, a little guy, only 150. They say he's a tough player out there. First down at the 45 yard line, their own 45. Gasser to throw again, swings it over to C.A. C.A. dancing around, tries to get away. He gains a couple. Mike Juries again. Juries on all over the field on both sides. He's been active today on defense. That time they just tried to isolate C.A. out on Juries. You throw a quick, uh, quick screen or a quick pass out there like that, you're hoping that uh, your man can break one tackle and break it down. Well, you know, we have the cloud uh, cover and some fog here early today, and it was cold. They said by halftime the sun would be shining. But here it comes. Can you believe that? It's just kind of cleared out here. The wind uh, probably helped me clear out the fog, too, and the sun may burn through. I hope it's cold. Second down and seven for the Texas El Paso, El Paso Miners. Right over the middle, zip that ball, it's caught, it's down to the 40-yard line. Sims grabbed it, and Mike Jones again, get on the stop. So it's another first down for UTEP, and right now, Howard Gasser is looking pretty good with his right arm. He's throwing the ball well now, he's settled in, he was rattled at the beginning, but he's doing a heck of a job now. And uh, they're just systematically moving the ball down the field, taking the deep.
defense gives them. They've had success throwing the ball this year. They're throwing for over 200 yards a game, Gasser has, and so uh, he is a good quarterback, and he has great arm strength, but now that he's settled down, he's doing a good job. First and 10 on the 40-yard line. Gasser back to throw. Pretty good protection. Does throw, and it's caught over at the 30-yard line on the sidelines and knocked out of bounds, forced out of bounds is Barrett. Covered this time by Bobby Thomas. So UTEP is moving the football through the air. They did that uh, just a moment ago on a drive, but their own mistake in the end zone, a penalty cost them the, the score. Now size advantage is what makes this play because Reggie Barrett at 6'4", 199 pounds, has a real size advantage on the Air Force Academy secondary that time. It's Bobby and, Thomas is 163. And Bobby Thomas was uh, quite a bit down there as far as height, too, and, and he was able to do that. Gasser really adding to the stats now. Now he's 11 out of 18 for 126 yards, and he's really picked it up, uh, completing almost all of his balls in the last five or six minutes. First down on the 29-yard line of the Falcons. Gasser back to throw, does throw. No, it's dropped. Thought it was caught, but he dropped it at the 20-yard line. The official's right there with an incomplete forward pass. Eric Faison covering, and it was Glenn Bishop who dropped the ball. And Glenn Bishop should have caught that ball. It's easier for us to say from up here, but uh, <laughs> as he came on a slant across the middle, he could hear footsteps, and he started to look to see where he was going to get hit from, and uh, that forced him to not concentrate and catch that ball. But you've got to. Uh, it doesn't hurt as much to get hit after you catch it, or at least it doesn't seem like it does. You're going to get hit whether you catch it or not, so you might as well catch the football. Bishop only a sophomore. Didn't play very much last year, but he has eight receptions this year. Gasser, in the huddle, comes out and tells the officials he wants a timeout. So he does call time with five minutes and seven seconds left to play in the first half of the game. Air Force has 25, and uh, UTEP has failed to score. You know, other games in the WAC today. Eastern Michigan's playing at Colorado State. That game's underway. Washington State is playing at Wyoming. That's a big one to watch for today. New Mexico will be at Tulsa. Uh, Cal Fullerton plays at San Diego State tonight. And the big game league-wise today, real big one, is Utah at Hawaii. Neither one of those teams can really afford another loss. And Utah's been putting some points on the board this year behind their great quarterback, Scott Mitchell. And the Hawaii prides itself on outstanding defense, so a real matchup over there in Honolulu. Today. It'd be better to say Hawaii cannot afford another loss for Utah. It's the first league game of the year, but still it's a very, very important game for the University of Utah and their fine quarterback, Scott Mitchell. Right here, Air Force Academy has taken advantage of some breaks. They've played a good, solid football game, although both teams started off kind of slow today, and they built up that 25 nothing lead. Utah trying to get on the scoreboard before the half ends. Second and 10 from the 29-yard line of Air Force. Gasser back to throw, throws it over the middle, he's got a man. He's hit hard, but he hangs under the ball at the 10-yard line. Bobby Thomas made the hit, and the catch was by number eight, Ricky Lopez. Look at him. He mentioned he, he was a tough guy, right. Jay. <laughs> he had to be tough on that one to even get up. That was similar to the play that they scored, but it got called back on. He just ran the seam up the center, the seam in the zone, and Gasser had to throw it at the exact right time when he was in between the linebackers and the second people, that little void in there, you see it. There's a space in there horizontally across the field in between the secondary and the linebackers, and the quarterback put it right on there, and a good 18-yard gain on it. First and 10, first and goal at the 10-yard line. Gasser back only a three-man rush, puts it over the middle, it'll be inside the five-yard line this time as he hit Marvin Hill, his big tight end. Terry Walker knocked him off his feet. It's almost a mismatch with anybody in the secondary when Marvin Hill catches it. It's a mismatch with him on anybody on the defensive line for Air Force. It was Marvin Hill being over 250 pounds. But uh, that one, they just had him delay at his tight end position, look like he was going to help on the pass protection, and then just kind of slide underneath after the, the receivers cleared out for him. I guess they hoped that that 254-pound frame could knock a few people over on the way into the end zone. Second and goal at the four-and-a-half-yard line for the Utah Miners. Gasser pitches it back to Sims, tries to follow his blockers, runs right into a minor at the five-yard line, and there'll be no gain. That minor is Eric Faison, and boy, he uh, made a good open field tackle. Sims, the freshman from El Paso, just couldn't get any, there was no opening out there. No, Air, Air Force has been very tough against the run today. I don't think uh, UTEP has any yardage on the run today. They've been successful throwing the ball, but to keep them honest, you have to run that ball, and the Air Force... I think Air Force outquicks many teams. Uh, they're able to get through the gaps in the offense and, and uh, come up and make those tackles because they have a lot of team speed on that defense. Third down, five and a half for the touchdown for Utah. They've loaded up the line. They're coming after him. He lobs it for the corner, and it's incomplete, but pass interference, I think, will be called. 
good effort that time by Gasser because uh, Eric Faison was right on him and he just flipped it for the corner. You know, we mentioned last time they ran that... Uh, Terry Walker is the one covering in the corner. We mentioned that uh, they threw it to the wide side last time. This time they do come back. They're on the hash. They try to go the easier way and they try to get it into the short side of the field of the corner. But you can see there Terry Walker was the one that hit Gasser in the face as he was throwing the ball. But... Uh, Eric Faison, Eric there Faison is over the corner. Get, gets the penalty, uh, never looked back for the ball and kind of ran into the, into the chest of Barrett. Here's the call. <laughs> pass interference. Pass interference. Well, the last time UTEP was down here, pass interference was called, but the other way, and it cost him a touchdown. So it was Faison covering back in the corner, and pass interference is called. Heads up play by Gasser to just uh, throw the ball into that corner. First and goal for the Miners on the two-yard line. And they're going to run for it, and Sims is met at the line of scrimmage. In fact, it looked like he stumbled before he got the handoff, and Steve Brennan at nose guard, and Pat McNellis hit him. He stumbled that time as he came out of his stance, but the Air Force Academy defensive line had such penetration, it wouldn't have made any difference at all. He uh, wasn't going to go anywhere that time. Three minutes left to play in the first half of this game, as UTEP is really struggling to get a score. Here's Scooter Menifee, number three into the game. He's had two consecutive 100-yard rushing games and is the leading pass receiver on this team, but he just hasn't been heard from in this game. Gasser may be changing the play. Here's the pitch back to Menifee, trying to get wide to the outside. He might. He cuts inside and is hit at the two-yard line. Well, he used his speed and looked like he might get outside, but Shannon Yates and Terry Walker also used speed to get over there and cover him. Terry Walker did a nice job of getting out there when you consider he came from his linebacker position inside all the way across the field, scraped out there and ran with Scooter Menifee, who can really fly to help out on that tackle. The corner doing a nice job of turning it back in as well. It's marked down on the yard and a half line. It's still goal to go. Third one and a half for a TD now. And the crowd really gets involved, making some noise here, trying to help their Falcons. Gasser with the ball, delayed handoff, trying to dive into the end zone, is Yates. The UTEP players say he uh, made it, but the officials say he did not. That was pretty close by Sims, and he tried to go over the top. So what do you do now, Coach? Take a look at the penetration by the Air Force defenses. When you go up over the top like this, the linebackers have to come up and fill. Look at that. That was one of, one of the secondary people, Shannon Yates, from his safety position, comes up over the top. He says, if you're going to dive, I'm going to dive and meet you halfway. Just an excellent play. If this were me, you said, what would I do, Coach? You've got to go for the score sure this time. Do. You're down 25 to nothing. The momentum's against you. You've got to get it in the end zone. They've got about four inches to go. And Scooter Metaphy comes back in. Gasser dives for it himself and makes it. So it took us, it was a struggle, a battle, but they finally got it in there. And the uh, Miners from Texas El Paso have their first score of the football game. And first and goal down there, and it took them all four plays to get it in. But that was an excellent drive engineered by Gasser. He moved the team down the field. We had one incomplete in that whole drive, and that was a drop ball. Other than that, he threw every ball on there. Here you see, this is probably what they should have done the play before. Just get down, get the quarterback to get his nose in the in the uh, a little gap there and go go for uh, for a touchdown there. Just get behind those big offensive linemen. Gasser's a big guy, too. He's pretty strong, so. And they'll try the extra point. It is good. So we have a 25-7 to 7 football game. And they have a different kicker in there, did they not? After that last missed field goal, they may have uh, put another one in. And that, that is, that's, we don't even have him on the program. It's number 12. We will find out who he is. We've got to check on that. That's a shift that we had not been made aware of that they could be changing there. But they do get the score. They get the extra point. With a minute 14 to play then in the first half of the football game, it's Air Force 25, Texas El Paso 7. And without the mistake that uh, UTEP made, it could be 25 it, it, to 14. It really could be 25 to 14. And uh, El Paso starting to settle down. But they're real shaky to begin the game. Of course, Air Force wasn't in sync either. Uh, Air Force just came on earlier. And uh, now that El Paso has things going, uh, the problem is, can you stop Air Force's offense to allow your to allow your own offense to catch up? Well, we're getting some sunshine now, too. We mentioned that as we arrived here today, cloudy. In fact, there was fog and cold. 39 degrees when the football game started. Good crowd on hand. And now 
the clouds are blowing away and the sunshine is coming through. UTEP will be kicking off then. And look at this. They're going to do it. That was a really interesting lineup. Had everybody in the middle of the field. Yeah, the in the middle of the field and they just kind of spread out. What I think they were trying to do is they, they, they came in the huddle. Looked like they were huddling up and then Air Force kind of milling around back there. They were just going to try to surprise them and kick it down there before Air Force was ready, but it didn't, it didn't they work. They it to Ron Gray and Ron Gray ran it right back up the middle. There's a minor scoring drive. 12 plays, 66 yards, 4 minutes and 34 seconds. Excellent drive. Ball control. They really did a nice job on that one. Number 12 is Larry Sims then who kicked that extra point. And so, with just over a minute to go in the first half of the football game, the Air Force Academy has the ball at their own 32. They're leading by a score of 25 to 7. D. Dow is a quarterback. As usual, fine football game. Sam's Johnson in motion to the right. Dallas is back to throw. Does so and completes it to the 45-yard line. You know, Dallas had one game last year where he completed 11 out of 11. That was against Northwestern last year, and uh, that was his best passing game. He had over 200 yards. That time, Steve Sen uh, just running a curl route for him, and uh, they ran out of a different formation, and they're in that again. They had one back in the backfield, just a fullback, two wings, basically the run-and-shoot formation, sent Johnson in motion, and... Uh, Here's Dallas rolling out again. Looking downfield, throws it downfield, he completes it to the 39-yard line. So he completed one to Sen. Now he completes one to uh, Wright. Or to Woods, check that, to Gerald Woods. That was a nice throw, running to his left, turned his body around, set his feet, and let that ball go. Woods was just running a curl on the left sideline, had the guy clearing out behind him, and uh, that was a nice nice throw there running to the O.T. Thomas made the tackle there in the one-minute drill. <laughs> That's right, the one-minute drill. And, and Air Force didn't have to have, doesn't have to do this very often. They control the ball so much, but this is good practice for them to do the one-minute drill and to try to throw the football. Over the 40-yard line, Dallas gives it up the middle. That's the big pullback inside the 30 down to the 25-yard line. Rodney Lewis, and they have moved it. Two pass completions, now a good running play. Ken Solly made the tackle. 40 seconds left to go in the half. And they're getting big chunks of yards. They sure are. I have it's also going to stop. They're at the 25-yard line with 40 seconds to go in the half. I was just thinking, would they settle to just uh, run out the time? No, there was a flag down. The pass is complete at the 12-yard line, down the sidelines, to Steve Sen again, but there was a flag drop, and holding will be called in the Air Force Academy. And they were picking up big chunks. They went 13 yards on that first throw, 14 yards on the next, and Rodney Lewis goes for 15 yards, then they just throw about another 14 or 15-yard pass, but it's going to come back, but uh, they're really moving the ball in big chunks. They had a minute seven when they got the football, and back near the 32-yard line, and you think, well, will they just uh, let the time run out? No way. Dallas impressed me. He's really throwing the ball well. The offense. Still first down. So holding is the call on the Air Force Falcons. Puts the ball back to the 35-yard line. They would have had a first down to the 12-yard line if the holding had not nullified the play as Dallas had completed the pass. First down and 20. Dallas rolls to the right, looking downfield to throw it again. And does throw way downfield, way downfield, too far. It's incomplete in the end zone. Intended for Steve Sen. And Dallas was running for his life, too. Vernon Cooks was covering defensively back in the end zone. 23 seconds. Dallas, now left in the half. Dallas showed us something about his arm strength that time. He was running full speed to the right through that back ball, back across his body. And I counted the yards up. He threw 47 yards in the air. So that's not too bad. Utah has three penalties for 34 yards in the game. Air Force three for 18. One of the penalties against uh, UTEP cost him a touchdown. 23 seconds to go in the half. Air Force with the ball on their own 30, or correction, on the UTEP 35-yard line. Dallas goes back to, no, he's going to run it himself. That's the quarterback draw. Down to the 25, down to the 20, down to the 15, down to the 10, down to the 5. Touchdown! How about that? And there's a flag, and I think they're going to call, call uh, UTEP for hitting Dallas when he was already in the end zone with a late hit, but... Uh, and Troy Ruffitt's the one that hit him. Dallas is down. Boy, you, I think he, he may be just taking a breather. I'll tell you what, Jay. As soon as he cut to the offensive line after watching him for yep. several games, right here I said, oh, there he goes. Forget it. He's out of here. Well, there's only two guys in the secondary left. There's no way they're going to catch D. Dallas. He's going to go all the way. He's got outstanding foot speed. He can cut. And, uh, boy, they really hit him once he got there in the end zone. Scott Hollister, who opened it up. 
the block that uh, helped key that. I don't know, with an Air Force's offense, would you call that a quarterback draw? Yeah, that was a quarterback <laughs> draw, but uh, when, you have, when you have D. Dallas uh, running that football, it sure makes a draw a more viable uh, chance for a touchdown there. That run right there, that was 34-yard touchdown run, uh, makes D. Dallas the all-time leader in touchdowns at the Air Force Academy. He and, needed only two to, to set that record. And uh, that puts him at, at third all-time in all-purpose yardage also. So uh, racking up the things again. There you see Dallas. He's kind of kneeling down, he limping he a little bit, him? hobbling a little bit. The way they hit him there in the end zone, he, he's not a big guy, 5'10", 153 pounds. And they kind of put the hits on him there in the end zone. Uh, but what a run before before they put him down and uh, goes all the way for the score. The old record, touchdown record, was held by Ernie Jennings with 32, who now belongs to D. Dallas. And the score is 31 to 7. And he's, he's, he's walking it off. Many times you get hit in the knee or in the ankle. Uh, you who play pickup basketball out there will know that sometimes you twist an ankle, you can walk it off. Same thing with a with a knee, and so D. Dallas trying to walk it off, but you, you hate to see that guy get uh, hurt or have any nicks, but... Uh, Lance McDowell comes in at the quarterback position right now. He's a senior from Shreveport. Looks like they're going to go for two points right now with the score 31-7. to seven. They're going for a two-point conversion with McDowell running the offense. Looks things over. Here's the snap. Still with the ball himself. He'll score it. <laughs> he faked it to the fullback and went to the right, and nobody touched him as he gets in for the two-point conversion to make it 33-7. to seven. Let's take a look at that again from a couple of angles, Jay. They just did not cover the quarterback option on defense. UTEP didn't. And uh, he, he, oh, look, in fact, let's take a look at the touchdown first. D. Dallas' touchdown, and then come back and look at the extra point. D. Dallas going back. They've thrown the ball successfully as he dropped. The linebackers dropped. Once he crossed through that line of scrimmage, you knew that D. Dallas was going to go. Nobody's going to stop when he gets out there with that kind of speed. And uh, we, and here's the two-point conversion. Just classic option. Rides the fullback in. They take the pitch man. Nobody has the quarterback. Rodney Lewis doing a nice job of blocking. And the lead back out there doing an, an excellent job as well. McDowell takes it in. Well, Blaine, we said it was the one-minute drill. They didn't need a minute. Could have been the 50-second drill. That's the way you answer a score, I guess. As uh, UTEP had moved downfield on a sustained drive to get seven points. And they answer in, in about 50 seconds. 33-7 the score. Air Force will kick off. And now it is turning into a bright, sunshiny day. And that scoring drive, Jay... Five plays, 67 yards, and as you mentioned, it was the one-minute drill. It took 58 seconds exactly, and uh, they got in the end zone on that 34-yard run by uh, Dallas. Joe went to kick off again. Here's the kick. Drives this one pretty deep with the uh, wind to his back. Taken at the goal line. They'll return it. 5-10. Up to the 15, and does not make the 20-yard line. That's Clarence C.A. who uh, pulls him down at that point. And so with only a few seconds left in the half, nine seconds to be exact, UTEP will take over on their own 18-yard line. They now trail 33-7. to Air Force Academy is undefeated this year. They're 3-0 overall. 2-0 in WAC play. If they win this one, they'd be 3-0. In the beginning of the season, you know, many people said, well, Air Force will be good. They have D. Dallas. They were questioning their defense. But I'll tell you what, Jay, uh, Air Force is looking tough. They are a top contender to take this WAC title this year. Only three men up front as Gasser goes back to throw, but they get to him. How about they only had three men up front. Were dropped, they dropped everybody else back, and they sacked him. Lance Bean is the one who got in there and pulled him down, and that will end the first half of the football game. After one half play, Air Force Academy, 33, the UTEP Miners, 7. Jay Monson and Blaine Fowler at Colorado Springs, where the Air Force Academy and the Texas El Paso Miners are battling out in a whack uh, conference football game. Blaine, what do you look for in the second half? Well, I think that uh, the Air Force Academy, we may see them throw the ball a little bit more. They did at the end of the first half, but just that to work on that, and they did very well. El Paso finally is in the groove. What they've got to do is maybe take a few chances on defense, do a little bit of stunning to try to take Air Force out of their offensive game to hold them down and keep them from scoring so their offense has a chance to catch up. Doesn't do any good to trade scores at this point. 
UTEP won the toss at the start of the football game and deferred. Uh, we'll make their choice in the second half, and obviously they have decided to receive, which means Air Force Academy will be defending the goal to our right in the south, and we'll have the wind to their back, and the wind is blowing a pretty strong wind right now. It is a factor in the football game. So Air Force Academy ready to kick off. C.A. and Lopez are the two deep men for the uh, UTEP team, and the kicker is Joe Wood. Here's the kick to open the second half of the football game. Drives it back deep. It bounces at the one-yard line and goes scooting on through and out of the end zone. It'll be a touchback and first and ten at the 20-yard line for the UTEP Miners. And that ball was spun like a helicopter. It kind of kicked it sideways and it spun sideways all the way down the field. And it just was almost like a, a slider moving away from the batter. The, uh, the defender couldn't get, or the return man couldn't get to the ball. Air Force had 33-7 as we open the second half. They built up a 25 to nothing uh, lead before the UTEP team could get on the scoreboard. First down on the 20, Gasser at quarterback. I formation, two men wide to the right. Gives him a handoff right up the middle to open the second half to his fullback, Greg Evans. And game three. Nothing fancy about that, just coming out, trying to establish the running game early. Interestingly, you know, we said that uh, El Paso, when they finally started to throw the ball, was able to move the ball on, uh, on the Air Force defense. The first game Air Force played against San Diego State, that's how San Diego State moved the ball. Northwestern and Wyoming tried to run the ball, and Air Force didn't give up any yardage there. So it looks like Air Force's defense against the run is superior to its defense against the pass this year. Second and seven for UTEP. Gasser will throw on second down. Good protection. Takes once now, swings it to a little safety valve over the left side, and gains only back to the line of scrimmage. You look downfield, and it was covered. Had it back over the left side and flipped it over there. Not much gain. That is his fullback, Evans, who caught it. And Evans was just a safety valve on that one, just out on a little swing toward the sideline. And they wanted to go upfield with the ball, but good coverage. Mario Mathis, in particular, had his man tight in the, in the second half. Good coverage by J.T. Tokish to make the tackle on Evans. We have third down. Here's a look at the scoring in the first half. It was all Air Force uh, until uh, San Diego State finally got on track. Third and seven. Gasser back to throw. Sometime. Now uh, collapses. He'll run it himself. 25 up to the 30. Up to the 35-yard line. And to the 38-yard uh, line. So Gasser ducked under the on-charging defense and turns it into a first-down run. Faison and Hill were the two who, uh, who put the pressure on. He dropped back, and he had he didn't have anybody open again, and the pressure really came, but they all overran him. He can't allow the quarterback to make penetration up into the pocket, and it was off to the races. Interesting thing here, a lot of quarterbacks will get down, but uh, Gazer says, I'm a big guy, I'm going to run and uh, put my head down here, and he gives some punishment to the defensive back. He got 15 yards on that one, Jay. Okay, Loveless and Tokish uh, were back on Gasser and forced him out of the pocket. It's a first down play, and they pitch it back. It's a reverse. C.A. coming around, knocked off his feet, and might have lost a yard. Air Force played that perfectly. That's uh, Randall Gladney, who looked like he was almost waiting for it. The problem they had on that one was they relied on the quarterback to make a block. You're going to watch here. The gas is going to give the ball, and then he's going to come down to the bottom of our screen, and he's responsible to block Gladney. Let's see if he does the job here. It's off the bottom of the screen. Ah, that's kind of a quarterback quarterback block, isn't it, Jay? <laughs> and being a former quarterback, I know they don't like to block. So that's right. Kind of a lot to ask for him to block Gladney on that one. Got back to the line of scrimmage. No gain. Second and ten. Gasser's back to throw. The rush is on. They'll sack him this time. They brought just about everybody. And he's dropped at the 28-yard line by Mike Vitez. So they'll lose yardage, bring up third down and long yardage now. And Gasser, they had people on last scrimmage. They bought the linebackers, but they also brought Betance, who's the Falcon backer, strong safety in the defense. And uh, when he when he comes, you have to make a quick throw. And uh, they call it the hammer. They call Betance the hammer. Well, they, they hammered him anyway. Oh. <laughs> okay, third down, and they lost eight yards on it. It's third and 18, and Air Force uh, puts in some extra deep backs on this one. As Gasser go back, goes back to throw, has some time. Throws it downfield, has it. It's caught at the 50. That's a first down play. They're in two Air Force territory as he hit him in right up the middle. That's uh, Reggie Barrett. And Barrett turned it into 
Uh, first down yardage. He gained about 10 after he got it. Air Force Academy was playing man-to-man -man defense in the secondary, and uh, Carlton McDonald had Barrett man-for-man. -man. Uh, but Barrett came down, ran across the middle, and you can see that McDonald ended up trailing him the whole way. Mario Mathis, the tackler. First down, and UTEP at midfield. They're at the 47-yard line of the Air Force Academy. Gasser fakes a handoff, back to throw, does throw, intercepted, and fumbled, picked up by the Air Force at the 42-yard line. They're still running with it, but I think the officials have signaled it dead. Intercepted by Mike Betance, stepped right in front of, front of the intended receiver. So that's the first interception of the football game, and Air Force will have the ball now at midfield. This time, I wasn't sure who Gash was trying to go to. He had two, two receivers running the hitch routes, just quick turn-ins. And he threw it. You can see there's a receiver there and a receiver on the wide side. It was halfway in between. I guess he was trying to go to that outside receiver, and that was B-Tance. And we understand that he's called the Bullet B-Tance is his nickname, not the Hammer. The Hammer is that celebration you see him do with her hands after a good play. And they call B-Tance the Bullet, and he does a nice job of coverage there. And uh, fumbles the ball. Really, he fumbled the ball on the he way did. down. The official blew that dead, and then everyone kind of jogged around and act like they didn't know what they were doing. Well, the Air Force with the ball, first and 10 on their own 43-yard line then. On the interception turnover. Handoff up the middle of the fullback. He's up to the 50-yard line. Rodney Lewis, who's had a good football game for the Air Force Academy, played very well. well we do have some halftime statistics now. Uh, so, some of the ones that, that uh, stand out stand out here on the sheet. Air Force, 291 yards rushing, and, uh, and uh, UTEP had one. And this is the reason Air Force getting yardage every way. They get it from the fullback, they're getting it from the pitchbacks, and of course Dallas doing a heck of a job running the ball. But uh, 291 yards rushing for Air Force, one for El Paso in the first half. Second and five for the Academy at midfield. The fullback again, big hole up the middle. He's down to the 30, finally pulled down from behind at the 24-yard line. Scooting right up the middle. Emilio Pittman finally pulled Rodney Lewis down. That has been an effective uh, tool in the Air Force arsenal today. The fullback. And you'll notice over the years that the fullback is is usually the top rusher for the Air Force Academy, the fullback and the quarterback now that Dallas is here. But that's the reason. If you don't take away that fullback give, they'll hurt you with that every time. Another first down. So they get the football on a an interception. And immediately they're knocking on the scoring door down at the 23-yard line, first and 10 for the Air Force Academy. D. Dallas setting his team offensively out of the wishbone. Looking things over. Long count has the ball. Rides it, does give it to the fullback again. This time it doesn't work. It's Jason Jones in replacing Rodney Lewis, but it's very well covered by Lorenzo Costantini. Rodney Lewis right now, after that long run, has rushed the ball 13 times for 17 yards. So we're really chewing up a big yardage here in this game. Iacopo also in the tackle for Utah. Here's a young man who was a linebacker, then a defensive tackle. A linebacker again. Second down and ten. Look at the turnover situation. Those turnovers hurt UTEP very badly at the beginning of the game because they couldn't get off and, and a good start with those turnovers. Well, this time they forced Dallas back. He pitches back to Howard. Had to pitch, but uh, UTEP had it covered and they simply forced the play back. Led by Ken Solly. Air Force will run the ball into the boundary or to the short side of the field on their option quite a bit. They like to do that. At that time they were coming to the left and uh, UTEP did a nice job of forcing Dallas deep into the backfield with his penetration. Then they covered and used the boundary as an ally that time. Gained about a yard, make it third and nine for the Air Force Academy on their own 23-yard line. Dallas still with the no, he gave it to his fullback and it's plugged up. I thought he kept the football. He did not. He gave it to Jason Jones again. And Jason might have a yard. It was a tough one to get it. And D. Dallas knows that that was a bad read. He came down the line, gave it to the fullback, and after uh, he gave it to the fullback and saw the attack, he continued on out and, and saw that there was nobody out there to cover the quarterback or the pitchback. They could have had big yardage. Maybe D could have even scored had he kept the ball that time. Dennis Austin loved the defensive chart. Now the Air Force Academy has their field goal kicker in there. This is Joe Wood. He has one field goal in the football game. He'll be kicking from the 27. It's a 37-yard attempt. Here's the kick. Drives it far enough, and it is good. Nice kick by Joe Wood. That is his second field goal of the game. And so with 8.50 left to play in the third quarter, Air Force scores the lead by a score of 36 to 7.
And there's the Falcon scoring drive. Six plays, 36 yards, two minutes and 26 seconds. They only went 36 yards because they had to settle for a 37-yard wood field goal. And uh, again, Air Force taking advantage of a UTEP turnover to put a score on the board. This time a pass interception, the first one we've had in the game. C.A. and Lopez, the two deep men. Here's the kick. This will come down short of the goal. I know the wind carries it into the end zone. He starts to run it back, then changes his mind. <laughs> and downs it uh, just before he got back to the goal line. That's Rick, uh, Ricky Lopez, who's played a pretty good football game for you today. That had to be tempting for him, Jay. There was a lot of green grass in between he and the first uh, Air Force defenders, but uh, he thought better of it and, and decided to down it in the end zone. 38-7. Or 36-7, I should say, with the uh, Air Force Academy leading and 8-51 left to play in the third period of this game. So here's Utah. They move the ball through the air. And then we're intercepted on the last drive. He fakes a pitch back and swings it out to Barrett. Catches the ball, gets a block, and makes it back to the 23-yard line. But there are three flags that go down as he tried to get free. Eric Faison covering over there for the Air Force Academy. And I think that uh, Utah will be called a holding. He uh, threw the flag out there. That's for a clip. clip. Yeah, what happened was uh, they threw that little hitch pass out there and they pulled their, uh, their guard, Phil Gabbard, out in front of it, number 74, big number 74. And uh, you can see him right there on your screen, number 74. Now he's going to run out on the screen. He's coming from the uh, right side of your screen. And here it is right here. You see it. We got it plainly there. He clips Gladney, which allows Barrett to get an extra couple of yards. But that's, that's going to go. And there's an also a face mask on the end of the penalty as well. Puts the ball back on the 10-yard line as they walk off the penalty then. They didn't call that face mask, but they definitely had to hold the Barrett's face mask as he went down there. That's a good uh, close-up of Howard Gasser, quarterback for the UTEP team. Penalties in the game. 45 yards UTEP, 18 Air Force. First and 20 from the 10-yard line. Gasser changing things, starting out to his wide receivers. He's back to throw. Pretty good protection this time. He zips it downfield, and oh, nice try at the 40-yard line, but he can't come up with it. Had to leap and stretch out and try and get that one. That is Richie Lopez, but he couldn't quite reach the football. Covering Rob Litsky. Litsky. Gasser call, called an audible on this one. He used the hand signals to get it out there. He saw there was going to be no free safety in the middle of the field, so he's going to send Ricky Lopez on a post right where that free safety had gone. Just a little overthrown. An excellent coverage by the corner for Air Force to stick with him stride for stride. Second and 20 from the 10-yard line. Air Force, a four-man rush. Gas are back to throw. Right over the middle, Sims has it. Spins his way to the 16-yard line. We're back talking about penalties, Blaine. We saw a game last week between BYU and the Navy, and Navy had no penalties in the game. I don't know the last time I saw that. It was very unusual for a team to go through an entire game without a single penalty, penalty but Navy did it. Brian Hill, the tackler. That time, Gasser wanted to get the ball upfield. Air Force was in his own defense, dropping off. He saw the linebackers there. Hill dropping off, and he just threw it to the back, coming underneath, when he was able to get just a couple of yards. We have third down and 13 for UTEP from the 16-yard line. Third and 14 now. Gasser back to pass. The rush is on. It leads one man. Steps up in the middle. Flips it downfield. It's incomplete. He tried to hit uh, Sims rolling out to the sideline. Allowed him to run under it, but he let him too much. Well, if he could have got Sims on that one, that was an easy first down for them. He, Sims, as he rolled around, Sims' defender came in to help out on the quarterback, Gasser. He just needed a little more air under that ball to allow Sims to get under it. They would have had a first down. We have a punter in then for... UTEP, they'll kick from the two-yard line. Here's the punt. Kick it almost straight in the air. It's going to come down at the 40-yard line. There's also a flag down as the UTEP punter, Lance Brownlee. Did they run into him, Glenn? Yeah, they, uh, they hit him pretty good. And you see that uh, we can see Brownlee walking off the field right now, and uh, he's holding his right arm. Way to go, Lance. That'll give, that'll give an automatic first down. Automatic first down, right. Let's take a look at that again, see if we can't see it in isolation on the punter. And... Uh, he punts the ball, and they come in in front of him, and can't see, make contact. You see from the left side, that was, that was a pretty good uh, job of acting. Now that we look at it on the replay, when it was in at full speed at the beginning, it looked like they hit him pretty good. But they're on the replay, I think they just brushed up against him. But you know those kickers, they uh, those punters, they 
they deserve Emmy Awards or, or Oscars for their acting sometimes. Coaching staff from uh, UTEP, David Lee, the new head coach in his first year. Here's the walkout. Personal foul, roughing the kicker, gets the defense, automatic first down. Personal foul, roughing the kicker. And that is a first down. So UTEP will keep possession with 7.27 to play in the third period. Air Force leading in the football game. And, and the punter for UTEP Brownlee, he did a real good job of acting because not only did he act when he got hit, he acted all the way off the field with that hurt arm. That was really something. <laughs> First down, Lopez comes in motion to the right side. Gasser back to pass. Fires one downfield. He's got a man there. It's caught. Nice catch at the 37-yard line. He floated that one downfield, and it was caught by Glenn Bishop right under it. Eric Faison covering for the Air Force, but it's a big first down call. Now, let's wait and see. That uh, roughing the kicker penalty may help you, Ted. Gasser rolled to the left, quick roll to the left, just to get the defense to move that way because they were playing zone defense, and then uh, he just throws the ball in the seam underneath the safeties and behind the linebackers. Just nice little touch on the ball, and... Uh, Nice job by Glenn Bishop to haul that in. And there you see his season statistics. First down for UTEP. Now on the Air Force 32-yard line. The midway through the third quarter. Gasser changing the play. They're coming after him this time. He drops straight back. Ducks one man but can't duck the others. Now flags go down. He's at the 40 or the 39-yard line with the tackle the flags are dropped. Pat McNellis led the way for the Air Force Academy where they really had the rush on. It's a holding call on uh, on Utah. What happens many times, Jay, is as you get a rush like that where everyone has to have their own man, you'll get a hold. Somebody will run by and uh, they'll grab a hold. You can see right there in the very back um, behind Gasser, the, 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 the UTEP offensive lineman basically tackled the uh, Falcon back for the Air Force Academy as he came on a blitz. Well, they talk things over with the team captains. They holding against the offense. The they will uh, reduce out. the penalty and take the down because they did get through and sack Gasser. That play, Jay, was the exact same one we saw about Dole in, in four or five plays ago where they brought the strong safety of Falcon back up on the line to blitz. The quarterback read it, made the call, and wanted to hit Ricky Lopez on a post. And remember the last time he had a stretch out and barely missed it. That time he was wide open, but uh, they had too much pressure on the quarterback for him to get the ball. Second and 17 then from the 39-yard line. As Gasser's back to throw with some zip on it, it's dropped. This time downfield, Glenn Bishop. Took out about the 26-yard line when the ball got to him. Kafka was back putting pressure on him. On the quarterback, uh, Howard Gasser. Gasser's taking some shots even when he does get the ball off. He's taking some hits uh, off. There's a pretty good pass rush here in the second half. Third and 17. Only score of the second half. A field goal by Air Force to stretch the lead. They now lead 36-7. Uh, to seven. Here's Gasser to pass again. Throws it downfield, and it is caught. Nice catch at the uh, eight-yard line. That's Barrett. Reggie Barrett has played a fine football game. Eric Faison covering. He was well covered. Barrett just turned around, stayed right with it, and got it. That's got to be a tough play for a cornerback to have to cover Reggie Barrett man for man down the sideline with the kind of size he has. He's a big man at 6'4", and he just goes up and... Spun uh, all the way around. Spun all the way around, made a good adjustment. Really not a great throw by Gasser, because um, I'm sure he didn't want to put the ball out there on the outside, but it ended up being the ideal place for the ball to be because it was excellent coverage on the play. First and goal on the eight-yard line for UTEP. See if they can punch it in here. Gasser gives it a running play inside the five-yard line. Fairly good blocking up front that time for the Miners. That was one of the first runs we've seen UTEP have the day where they actually got positive rushing yardage. Right. And they just brought the uh, Craig Evans. brought the left side of the line on down blocks and uh, got some good yards on that one, good penetration to the defense. Gasser passing at this point. He has 18 completes out of 30 attempts for 246 yards. No touchdowns over yet, and he has that one interception he threw in the last drive. Second and goal on the three-and-a-half-yard line. Gasser's going to throw for it. Throws for the end zone. Looked like uh, Barrett was held up over on the sidelines, frankly, and can't get into the corner. He's protesting to the officials, too. 
Faison was covering him. That, that, we have a look. Yeah, watch and see. That was one of the worst pass interferences I think I've ever seen. I think so. And both officials were right on it and never called a thing. Well, they tried to get it to Barrett. He's had the great game. Made the big grab to uh, set it up down here. But the only thing I can think of is maybe the officials thought that was an uncatchable ball. They don't call pass interference an uncatchable ball. But the reason it was uncatchable is uh, that Faison grabbed right onto him and never let him go. So it's third and goal at the three and a half yard line. Yes, we're looking for the TD pass. Throws it and it's caught this time for the touchdown by uh, Barrett. And maybe he took advantage of the last one because it looked like he was going for the corner. He bumped off on Faison and then came back and got it. They, they set that up with the fades they've been throwing to the back corner. This time Barrett goes just like he's going to go and had a good shot of it there in the center of our screen where he went toward the corner and came back on an out back toward the front pylon in the end zone. And uh, that's a tough route to cover, especially if the quarterback puts the ball right on the receiver like he did that time. Well, the game Barrett's been playing, he deserved a TD catch. It is 36 to 13 now, and we'll try to kick the extra point for Utah. It's down, the kick is up, and it is good. That is Larry Sims, number 12, who kicks the extra point, and it makes it 36 to 14, Air Force leading. This is the Blue and White Network. Dominic Cephalone is in to kick off now for UTEP. <laughs> and they're all lined up at midfield again, just like they did the last time, just like they were huddling. You, you know, the Air all, Force the, is ready. The only reason I can think they would do that is a lot of times on defense, each, or on a kick return, each man on the, re, on the return team has assigned a man to uh, hit and is blocked. But Air Force doesn't do that. They run a wedge. So I don't know what good that's doing them. <laughs> well, that's Jason Jones who takes the kick, returns it to the 34-yard line. Air Force will have good field position. We told you we'd have some trouble with numbers. Number 12 has been doing the place kicking for UTEP is Jason Gillespie. So we apologize for the mistake, but that's the correct one. And there's a look at the scoring drive. 10 plays, 80 yards, 3 minutes. And Gas are throwing that uh, fade come back to the to the front of the court of the end zone to Barrett. And the PA team is good. 5.45 left in the third quarter of this game. The Air Force now with the first down on their own 34-yard line. Now it's with the ball. Gives it up the middle to Jones, his fullback. He's to the 35-yard line. Hit hard at that point. Jones playing quite a bit here at this point of the game, the sophomore. It would appear, Blaine, as if uh, uh, Dallas, when he was shaken up on that uh, run towards the end of the first half, was not injured seriously. No, he's, he's doing fine. They're, they're, UTEP is attempting to take Dallas out of the offense here in the second half, really concentrating on him, but he's a threat to break one at any time. Second and seven. Gives it right up the middle this time. And we gain about five, maybe six more yards. It'll be short of first down, but not by much. That's Jones once again. Jason Jones tackled by Ross Purity, who is an outstanding football player. Let's take a look at it from the secondary. Nothing fancy about that. They have the left guard and the right tackle just push their men out, allow a little seam so the back, the fullback can go straight through and they got good yarders out of it. Purity is a young man who started for four years for Utah. Third down, a yard and a half for a first down for Air Force. Here's Dallas. They get the first down yardage and a handoff straight ahead. So they're punching it right up the middle right now. Ron Gray, the ball carrier, and he easily has the first down yardage. Tackled again by Ross Purity. That's Air Force's counterplay, which they have a lot of success with. The Dallas just opens to the left, turns back in, they run a little quick trap, kind of a full block on the inside, and bring Ron Gray from the right half back to the left side. And that works well for him. Air Force at this point has 336 yards rushing, and we've got a long ways to go. First and 10, just short of the 50-yard line for the Falcons of the Air Force Academy. They're leading 36 to 14. Dallas gives to Jones off the right side, and with his uh, just strong leg power, he is over the 50 down the 45-yard line. Ron Solly made the stop, but that was a good run by Jones. This drive so far, uh, Air Force is moving the ball right into the heart of that UTEP defense. This time it's going to be the regular option, but uh, Dallas reads the tackle and sees that he, there's a lane there for Jason Jones. Not much of a lane. Jason Jones does a lot of it on his own, but... Uh, Ron Gray's counterplay is the only play in this whole drive where the fullback hasn't gotten the ball. Second and two for the Air Force. Just inside the 45-yard line of UTEP. Dowa still has the football. Faked it up the middle. He's going to throw it this time. Throws it way downfield, and it is incomplete at the 10-yard line. 
and tended for Dan Zebrick and covered by Troy Ruffett. Troy Ruffett did a nice job that time of covering. Zebrick went down on a post and then broke to the corner, running a post corner. And uh, it's hard to concentrate on pass coverage if you're trying to defend the option because you have so much responsibility to come up and help out on the pitch back for run that it's hard to be disciplined enough to stay back there and cover a receiver when he goes on the route. That time he did a very nice job. Coach DeBerry said they worked a lot on passing in the spring drills this year at Air Force Academy. Third down, still a yard and a half to go for a first down. Dallas to Gray, and Gray has the first down again. Just right off that right side, direct handoff. He's just short of the 40-yard line. It'll be another first down for the Falcons. Again, they ran that counter. They ran three plays ago to Ron Gray, where Lee Dallas opens up away from the back and turns back in. They run that quick fold block or trap inside and bring Ron Gray across. Three and a half minutes left to go in the third quarter. Larry Bonner, the tackler. Fisher DeBerry looking over his play chart to see what he wants to run. There's D. Dallas's passing statistics, 207 for 27 yards. He hadn't had to throw the ball that much this game, though. Just that last drive when they went down and moved it quickly. Well, this time it's the handoff to the fullback. You saw UTEP, just as the play was made, shifted and really loaded up the line of scrimmage, and they stopped. Jason Jones might have got a yard. Everybody in the middle of the line and that stop. This time, this time it's just a pure option again. And Jason Jason Jones coming in from the fullback position. D. Dallas, I think, reading the hole a little wider than Jason Jones did. And Jason Jones got caught up inside, so he got no gain. Second down. Forward motion to give him a couple of yards. Make it second and eight. This time the handoff is to uh, is it to Deshaun Durham. A little bit of a different action in that particular play. He turned around, faked to one man coming by, and gave it to the second man by. No, it's, it's Chris Howard who carried the ball, number 34. Yeah, that's, that's something we haven't seen Air Force do today. Just a cross in the backfield, fake to the pullback to the right, hand on an outside handoff to the to the right, right halfback going to the left side of the line. Two minutes left to go in the third quarter. Third down. About uh, two and a half yards for a first down. Dallas. Gives it up the middle, and they've got the first down yardage again. Right up the middle that time. They've been, uh, they've been overpowering UTEP on this particular drive. Which is, which is hard to believe because UTEP is bigger and, and maybe more physical than Air Force. I don't know, though. Air Force gets a bad rap for not being physical just because they're not yeah. as big as some of the other teams are just as aggressive and hit just as hard as some of the bigger teams they play against. Jason Jones who carried it, but uh, Scott Hollister on that offensive line, the left tackle, led the way and did a good job. First down, Air Force, on the 27-yard line of Utah. Dallas has his team set, looking over that defense. We're running out of time here in the third quarter. Gives it to Jones, and Utah is ready for him this time. Jason Jones is hit hard. Sean Schulte, the first one to get him, and got him with a good high tackle. Utah has some big players up front, some strength. We're just over a minute to go in the third quarter. Sean Schulte mentioned the big guy, 6'4", 273 pounds, and that's got to be a load when it comes down on you like that, as he did on Jason Jones that time. Probably not a great read by D. Dallas that time. Should have pulled the ball out and, and uh, taken the next two options. No gain, second and ten. Dallas a long count. Gives it up the middle again, and not much doing again this time. Except running time off the clock. Jones, the fullback, the ball carrier. UTEP was trying to tackle the football that time. Trying very hard to pull it away from Jones. And there was a little extracurricular activity going on out on the left sideline uh, between the receiver and cornerback on that side. And uh, some flags were thrown up. They're going to call it on Air Force. Stubblefield made the tackle. Line of scrimmage at 27, so that's a possible 15-yard penalty. That was Dan Zedroik out there. Uh, um doing a little extra hitting after the whistle had blown. And he wasn't doing anything dirty. He was just blocking, but he continued to block for a good uh, 10 seconds after the play was over. The official was right there and threw the flag. 43 seconds left to go in quarter number three. Air Force ahead 36 to 14 in the third period. Air Force has a field goal while UTEP has a touchdown. Dead ball, personal foul against the offense. Third down. 
So it is a personal foul penalty marked off against the Falcons. Puts the ball back on the 41-yard line. Where it'll be third down. Third and 20, about 24 yards where, where it's spotted. This is, this is a situation you don't like to be in if you're a running team, but uh, I don't know. Last time they had a long yard situation, they ran a quarterback draw to D. Dallas. Here's a look at the rushing statistics. And uh, he went all the way for a score. Be interesting to see what they do here. Utah loads up the middle again. Dallas still with the football. He's back to pass. The pressure's on. He's chased to the sidelines, throws it under pressure, and it's out of bounds. It's incomplete. There's also a flag down. 21 seconds ago in the third quarter. It's going to be a hold against uh, the Air Force Academy. I would imagine UTEP would decline. That'll be fourth down, and they're out of field goal range. Okay, our next break, by the way, will be a local break for our stations along the uh, network. 21 seconds to play in the third quarter. Holding against the offense. It's refused. Fourth down. And you hear the call. The holding penalty is refused. So Air Force Academy, a team that does not punt very much. During a stretch of three games, Blaine, they only punted the ball four times. That's, that's because they score every time they have their hands on the ball, and uh, <laughs> they had to punt a couple of times today. Eric Olson back to kick for the Air Force Academy. And here's the punt. Hangs it up high, and it'll go into the end zone. No, it does not. It does not. It bounces and takes a bounce to the left and goes out about the five-yard line. So it's a fine punt by Elton. Great field position. And UTEP will have to start about 95 yards away from the goal line now with only 12 seconds to play in the third quarter. They'll get at least one more play in here in this third period. Well, Eric Olson sure did a nice job that time. He lined it up. He was going for the coffin corner the whole way, kicked it down, got the bounce he needed, and uh, that's tough to do. It really is. It's, it's harder to kick coffin corner to where you want it than it is to just get there and boom the ball out 50 yards. It's the four-and-a-half-yard line where the ball is spotted, the actual line of scrimmage. Howard Gasser at quarterback. Started slowly. He's come on pretty strong, however. Throwing from the end zone, completes it out to the 15-yard line to the 20 Finally knocked off his feet of the 20-yard line to the big tight end, Marvin Hill. That's a real smart play out of your own end zone. It's very safe. It's just a little delay where you have your you have your uh, tight end hold up, pretend like he's pass blocking, let the defensive linebackers get in their drops, get 15, 20 yards down the field, and then just a nice little toss over the center. It's real safe, and uh, no threat of interception on that, and you get good yards and give yourself some breathing room. Hill was really shaken up on the play. It has to be taken out. That ends the third quarter of the football game. It is 36-14, to 14, Air Force leading. This is the Blue and White Network. And we want to remind our viewers that next week, September 30th, on Saturday, we take our show up the road to Fort Collins, Colorado, for the Air Force Colorado State game. Check your local listings for where that game will be aired in your area. There's a look at the score by quarters. Air Force getting off to a quick start, and UTEP just, just coming on there in the second quarter, and uh, they've moved the ball here. It's too bad they got such a slow start, and they had to come out of a hole here, and now they're in another hole. First play of the fourth quarter, you see J.T. Tokish force his way. He went right through a block, in fact, pushed the blocker into Howard Gasser and got him a sack and dropped Gasser back at about the 12-yard line, which will bring up second and long yardage now. Gasser's thrown for a lot of yards in this game. Be over 300 now. Maybe. I'll make it second and 18 for the uh, Miners. They started in the hole after that punt out of the five-yard line. Had a good first down play. Here's Gasser back to throw again. Some pressure. And throws it out of bounds on the sideline. He just got rid of that one. They had a screen set up over on the right side, but the... Uh, the Air Force defense didn't fall for it at all. They were right out there on the screen just waiting with the, with the receiver to catch that and intercept it. Uh, Gasser made a smart decision to just throw it out of bounds and come back and, and to try to get it here on third down. Defensively, led by Steve Brunham that time, the junior nose guy. There, there you see the third down conversion ratio. UTEP uh, struggled a little bit on third down. Four out of 11. Air Force at 50%, six out of 12. Right now, UTEP has third and 18, and they're back on their own 13-yard line. And Gasser calls timeout. You know, I'd almost like, as they brought the play into him, he talked to the young man, 
like that's not what he wanted to do. So there's time out on the field. This is the Blue and White Network. You tap with the ball, third down at 18, early in the fourth quarter of the football game. Gasser needs long yardage right here to keep possession. He rushes on. He gets the pass off, and it is tip, tip, tip. Well, we'll see. Is that ruled a completion and a fumble? It'll be up to the officials. The ball, I think, was tipped three times, went right into the hands of a UTEP player, Marvin Hill. He grabbed it, was hit, the ball bent, went bouncing around, and we'll see what the officials rule. Watch, I think a UTEP player tips this ball first. I may be wrong, but we got a good view from the end zone. They call it an incomplete forward pass. They finally call it complete. Watch what happens here. It is. A UTEP player touches it first, then an Air Force player, then another Air Force player. Did he have it? No, no he was nope. juggling the ball when he had it, and then it falls down. And another Air Force player touched it. I was watching the officials on that one, Jay. And as they came in, they looked at each other. Nobody wanted to make a call. They were all That's looking right. like, did you see that? I didn't see that. Did you see that? I didn't see that. I think you're right. Finally, they made a call, then they went in and discussed it and decided it was an incomplete. Brownlee will punt one yard deep in the end zone. The snap is to him. No rush. Gets the kick away. It's a low kick. Fielded on the run at the 45-yard line by Bobby Thomas. And Air Force Academy will take over at midfield. Looked like a volleyball game a moment ago. That got tipped three times, juggled and dropped, and then the Air Force defender almost fell right on his chest. He could have intercepted the ball if he would have been after, looking at uh, it. After the big tight end, uh, Marvin Hill had the ball for a moment. Juggled it, finally the officials conferred and said, nope, it's an incomplete forward pass. Air Force Academy with the ball at the 46-yard line of UTEP. D. Dallas, so call on the signals. Is that a good game? Dallas gives to his fullback, slants off to the right side, and is to the 41-yard line. That is Jason Jones, the ball carrier. And Jason playing a lot of that position here in the second half. Just short of the 40-yard line. Well, and that one, the... UTEP Miners brought their end down real quick. You'll see him come into the right side of your screen here. He came down and, and, uh, and forced D. Dallas to give that ball overran the play. D. Dallas thought that the, there was a scene there for Rodney Lewis and gave him the ball. Doug Morgan and uh, Emilio Pittman, the tacklers for Utah. Second and six. Dallas with the ball again, gives it up the middle. This time it is Rodney Lewis's fullback, and he's uh, bent over backwards, gaining a yard. Air Force has gone almost exclusively to that inside give here in the last two drives. They moved the ball a little bit at a time, but uh, not quite as exciting as when uh, D. Dallas pulls it out and goes outside either for that run or that pitch. Um, although that, that fullback dive sometimes breaks through that first line of defense, and it's, it's nothing but green grass between the, the fullback and the end zone. Third down, a little over three to go for a first down. And with this uh, particular offense they're running, they keep the clock going. Just under 15 minutes to play. Dallas with the ball, keeps it himself this time. There's the pitch back, trying to turn the corner. It's pretty well played this time. In fact, you can't play it any better. Chris Howard took the pitch, and I think it's Larry Bonner out in that corner. And Daniels Droy, he was out there trying to block, and, uh, and just a great play. You're going to see it here on the top of your screen. D. Dallas brings the ball out. UTEP does a nice job of playing D. Dallas and forcing him to pitch the ball. And then you see Z. Droyk out there trying to block, but the corner does a nice job of playing off the block, coming in and making the tackle. Notre Dame leading Michigan State 14 to 13. I'm not sure what point that is in that game, however. One point lead for Notre Dame. They send the punter in. It's in the third quarter. Here's the uh, kick. Kicking for the corner again. Picks it up very high and it bounces at the two-yard line. Try to bat it back out of the end zone, but uh, it goes into the end zone. And the Air Force is going to uh, argue the point with the officials down there. And again, the officials were hesitant to make a call on that one. 36-14, Air Force leading. We have 11 minutes and 46 seconds left to play in this football game. It'll be a touchback. It'll come out to the 20-yard line. I've heard a lot about the Air Force uh, offense. Lane, I've been impressed with their defense in this game. They've been tough, especially against the run. The pass had given them a few, few plays, but uh, now they're starting to do some stunts on the defensive line, do some twists for those people, bring some linebackers, and put pressure on the quarterback. And uh, 
He's making an audible for a safety blitz again. And they're coming after him. He drops back, looking, throws it down deep, and threw it too deep. It's incomplete. He made that same call. You know, I'm wondering how smart that is to give a visual cue to your wide receivers of what you're running. I know exactly what he's going to run because he makes the same call when he takes his hands up behind his head, gasser, and puts both hands in the back of his head and looks at his wide receivers. That means it's a strong safety blitz and he has his wide receiver run a post. And uh, he's done that every time he, Every time he's made that motion. That's the play they've run. And uh, you know, they ran in Ricky Lopez into the middle, as you said. But, but uh, Rob Litsky was right with him. Second down and 10 from the 20-yard line. Gasser yeah, so back and again. They're coming after him and they sack him. At the 11-yard line, somebody slipped through. That is Terry Walker. I don't think Walker was even blocked. Walker came up and got right on the line of scrimmage. Uh, and from his linebacker position, came straight through. The guard took the, or the center took the nose. The guard took the tackle. And nobody took Terry Walker, obviously. He got back there as fast as Gasser did. Eight-yard loss. It's third and 18. So they're playing long yardage uh, bat, or, uh, football here in this at this point in the football game. 11 minutes left to play. There you see the time of possession. Really, you know, not, not a big difference there. The difference is Air Force put, has put the ball in the end zone and threw the goalpost when they've had it. You can struggle. See where it goes in motion. Gasser back to pass. Fires it downfield and incomplete at the 45-yard line. And uh, Barrett had the ball go through his hands. He thinks he should have got it. It would have been a great catch, a spectacular catch. That was a great throw, Jay. He really put it where it had to be. That was an excellent coverage by the secondary of the Air Force Academy. And the Reggie Barrett kind of short on it. He thinks he should have been able to get that. I'll have to find. The Air Force defense, Jay, has six sacks for minus 35 yards on, uh, on gas today. Really. Putting a lot of pressure on the quarterback, particularly here in the second half. Brown back to kick. Gets it out of the end zone. And pretty good ca uh, kick this time. Taken back at the 45-yard line. And good coverage is down at the 45-yard line. Bobby Thomas. There's also a flag down. They ran all over the kicker that time. It, and that time he wasn't faking it. <laughs> They went after the punt, tried to block it, and it, you'll, you'll take a look at it here, because we've got an isolation on the punter, and uh, they hit him that time, no doubt about it. Well, that will enable uh, UTEP to keep possession again, then. Rushing the kicker, automatic first down. That's the second time in the game UTEP has kept possession in that situation. You know, the Miners have outscored the Falcons here in the second half, seven to three. Defense has been pretty good. The offense has had the ball here in the second half, but they seem to move forward and backward, forward and backward, and never able to really punch it in the end zone. And even though they have moved the ball well with their passing, uh, Air Force has made some adjustments, and they're getting through, giving, giving problems. UTEP has taken away the the, uh, the pitch and quarterback game here in the second half. Uh, and Air Force's offense, and it's fourth beat Dallas to give the ball to fullback almost exclusively here. And Air Force hasn't gotten those big chunks of yardage for scores like they did in the first half. After the penalty, the automatic first down, the Miners will take over first and 10 on their own 27-yard line. They have two touchdowns in the game. They had uh, one called back because of a penalty. Gas are ready. The Falcons have loaded up the line again. See if they come after him. Nope, only a three-man rush this time. The pass downfield is incomplete. Pretty well covered at the 30-yard line. Headed for Caldwell, covered by Rob Litsky, who hit him just as the ball got there. Litsky had very good timing on that one. He played it well. He played the receiver tight. Gasser came back. He just ran a hitch on the left side. And Litsky just times it out perfect. And just as the ball touches the receiver's hands, puts the hits on him. Second and ten. There's a look at Rob Litsky. 6'1", 185 pounds, and a good hitter in that secondary. Still at the 27-yard line. Gasser, three men wide to the left, one wide to the right. Rolling back, looking to throw. He's going to throw deep this time, and it is incomplete at the 33-yard line of the Air Force Academy. Rob Litsky covering again. He's all over the place. And that was the same route we saw about uh, three plays ago when Reggie Barrett went down the sideline and, and uh, just before the punt, and, and the ball was just out past his fingertips that time again. Pretty good throw, just a, maybe six inches too long, or Barrett would come down on that one. Excellent coverage by the secondary. Well, we've seen good coverage by Litsky on each of those plays, right there. That's Reggie Barrett coming off the field. He's had a good game. Third down and 10 for UTEP. 
at the 27-yard line. Back to throw. For a second, one man came through from the right side. That is Steve Brennan. And made a good tackle. Just wrapped his arms around him. He couldn't get away. So again, they'll be in a punting situation. Steve Brennan from his... Uh, his position there on the, on the right side just comes through and he made a fake with his left foot in toward the left and ran right around the offensive lineman never even touched him that lineman had a no hitter going on that play there's lance brownley back to punt again bobby thomas is back deep back at his own 35 yard line it's not not much they're going to throw it they pass it it's caught to the 25 up to the 30 to the 35 up to the 40 a flag no it's not a flag or is it all the way down to the uh, 40 yard line. Is that a flag back downfield? Yeah, it is. It's going to slide back to the 28. And I'm wondering if they're going to call illegal receiver downfield. <laughs> Could be Air Force Academy applauding. They gamble right now. Brown, Brownlee passes the ball. It's holding on the Air Force Academy. Larry Sims caught it. And the holding call was on the Air Force. Just a, a real gutsy play here because they're deep in their own territory. They set up the punt. Air Force had a return on it, so everyone had their backs turned to the receiver there. And uh, nobody out there to even touch him until it's well beyond the first down markers. And then they're going to call holding on the on the Air Force team. And uh, El Paso has to be happy about that. Well, that's quite a play. There's, there's a look at Doug Morgan, the, the guy that received the play, linebacker but on the special teams is on that punting team and uh, a nice job, 38 yards they got on that one. So UTEP will have the ball first and 10 on the Air Force 42 yard line. Gas are back to throw. It's over the middle. Throwing it down deep. He's got a man there. It's caught. Touchdown. That's Barrett. And he's just been off an inch or two. This time it was right there. Eric Faison covering, but Barrett got him back of him and has a second TV pass of the game. That's kind of a spectacular play. And we've got an isolation shot on Reggie Barrett here on the left side. This is the third time he's run that route. Just a quick streak fade to the corner of the end zone. And Gasser puts him on, puts it on him for the touchdown. Nice piece of camera work. Look at that. He just runs by, and that is a perfect throw by Gasser. And uh, you can see Reggie Barrett showing some nice speed there and a good move to the, to the outside to, to be open on that one. They've tried it three times in the last five or six plays, and, and as you mentioned, Jay, twice just off the fingertips, that time right on, and they got, got the touchdown. Well, there's David Lee, a gambler. He passed off that uh, punt formation, and they turned it into a TD. They're going to go for a two-point conversion now. Gasser at quarterback. Looking to throw for two points. Throws incomplete. Hit his man, but it was out of fingertips and out of bounds. That was Glenn Bishop covered over there by Rob Litsky. And so with nine and a half left to play in this football game, it's 36 to 20 Air Force. And Blaine and sports are always those big what ifs. But what if that uh, touchdown had not been called back by a penalty for UTEP in the first half? We could have had a wild finish. We still may well have a wild finish to this game. As the kickoff by UTEP is driven deep into the end zone and out of bounds. And has the Air Force Academy lost its momentum? Let's look and see. I know that here in the second half, Jay, they really have not been able to move the ball the way they did in the first half. And the Miners moved the ball well on that, that drive. Eight plays, 80 yards, two minutes and nine seconds. Gasser got that 42-yard touchdown pass from Barrett, and the two-point conversion was, was failed over the right corner of the end zone. So they're down by 16 points now with 9.37 to play. Utah kept getting chances on that last drive. They had the first fourth down or play, roughed the, roughed the punter, gave him the first down, then they had another fourth down play, and they run the, uh, the fake punt and get a first down out of that one. So there are some gutsy calls and some big plays for them on that last drive. First and 10 Air Force at their own 20-yard line. Utah has kind of loaded up the line this time. Still with the football is Dallas. There's the pitch back. They turn the corner up to the 30 to the 35-yard line. So they run the option that time, running very effectively. The pitch back is to Greg Johnson. Mr. Dependable. And he has a first down for a run. The man that made that play go was Steve Sen, the wide receiver out on the, on the left side of your screen. Right there he is, number 83, blocking on number 29 for UTEP. He made that block on the corner, which allowed Greg Johnson to turn it up inside and get the yards for the first down. 11 yards on that one. 36-yard line, first down call for the Air Force. 9-20 left in this football game. the middle to his fullback over the 40 to the 41 yard line Rodney Lewis 
They've used that play a lot in the second half, as Blaine has pointed out. And it's been good to them, too. Five-yard gain, second and five. Next week, Air Force will play Colorado State in Fort Collins, and Utah will be on the road to play Arkansas. These two teams are out of the Western and Middle Conference and coming into action today. Every team in the WAC had lost at least one game except Air Force. And every team in the WAC had won at least one game except San Diego State. Could be a very balanced league this year. I think we have an injured player. Well, they covered the option as well as you can cover at that time. That's uh, Iacopo, the junior, who was shaken up on that play. They are helping him off the field. So Air Force has fourth down and six at their own 40-yard line. They're leading by a score of 36 to 20 now with seven and a half left in the football game. And there's plenty of time. Air Force punting again to UTEP, and UTEP's been able to move the ball here in the second half. They put another score on the board, and uh, this is a tight game, Jay. Eric Olson back at his 25-yard line to do the punting. Well, the Miners have... Uh, they have two men back deep. One of them is Vernon Cooks, number 29, who expects to receive the punt. Long count this time. This time is two loads. Here's the kick into the wind. Cooks comes up, takes it on the run at the 30-yard line, and dances his way over the 35-yard line. Covers the football, but it had already been sick of dead. It's covered by UTEP anyway. So, with seven minutes left to go in the football game, 16-point lead right now for the Air Force Academy. Play resumes then with the UTEP team. They have possession on the Air Force Academy 35-yard line. And we have six minutes and 56 seconds left to play in this football game. UTEP trying to have to get another score here. Then they could really make it interesting. There's Gasser using that signal you talked about, Blaine, by tapping his helmet. Like he's expecting a blitz. He's back to throw, throws it over the middle, and it is incomplete. Flag goes down. Making the defensive play was Rob Litsky. And it was intended for, intended for Clarence C.A. But a flag was thrown, and apparently it'll be pass interference. What Litsky did was he put his left hand on the receiver and tried to strip the ball with his right hand. He didn't leave that left hand down. But uh, I'll tell you what, he goes to that same signal again. Puts his hands behind his head. We know he's throwing a post to the wide receiver, and so does Litsky. That's why he's running with him every single time down the middle. I don't understand why they would go with a visual signal when all they have to do is have some kind of verbal audible. But uh, Litsky's right on him, running with him man for man. He knew where the ball was going just like we did. Uh, the problem was he put his left hand on the back of the receiver, and uh, they call him for the pass interference. Well, they bring the ball back to the line of scrimmage, of course, to mark the penalty out from there. He sent it to the pass interference. From the previous spot, 15 yards, first down. And the fans are going here, but that was a good call. We saw on the replay. He did have that, that, off, that offhand on the receiver. There you see the, uh, the penalty situation. UTEP has 5 for 45, Air Force Academy 7 for 84. First and 10 of the 20 yard line for UTEP. We're making a game of it here in the second half. Here's Gasser back to throw. Throws it downfield. He's got him in there. Oh, should have had him, I believe. And at the line of scrimmage, that's Reggie Barrett, who's had some big grabs in this game. And that would have been a touchdown if he held on to it. And he should have had that one went right through his hands. If you get two hands on the ball, you should come down with it. 
and the gasser made a great throw. Barrett just ran down, went like he was going to the post, and then went back out to the corner, turned his defender around, wide open. You see it bounces off his right hand, then the left, and right through. He should have caught that ball. Rob Litsky was over there covering. <laughs> They're talking to the uh, Air Force people. There was a flag on the play on that one. So maybe it wouldn't make much difference then. There's a look at Gasher's statistics up to this point. 22 out of 42, 337 yards, two touchdowns. You know, he started off real slow. The boys brought those statistics up as the games have progressed. 10-yard walk-off against the Miners from UTEP, so even if he had caught that, would have called back. It is first and 20 from the 30. As the Miners try to get another score, they've outscored Air Force here in the second half. It's now 36. The rush is on. Oh, he just turns around and goes down. Looks like they had 12 men coming. Led by Brian Hill and Randall Gladney. Well, what they did was they brought everyone on the front seven. They brought all the down linemen. Well, they brought three down linemen and all four linebackers, and they had the uh, had the secondary cover the four receivers man to man and the four secondary people. Problem was, University of Texas El Paso was in a formation where they didn't have two backs in the backfield, so there wasn't enough people to block all those linebackers. And Gasser knew it. He got down quick. 6-17 to play. It is second and 27 for UTEP. Let's put one man wide to the right, one to the left. Now he's making that same signal by tapping, tapping his helmet. Here they come again. He's back to throw. Throws it way downfield, and it is incomplete. Down at the eight-yard line. Intended for Clarence C.A. Boy, they are really putting the rush on Gasser right now. Eric Faison covering downfield. Stops the clock. And it'll bring up third and 27. When, when you have pressure like that, when you, there's, there's a quarterback sacks. Air Force Academy has eight now. Throwing them for 49 yards and losses. When they're bringing everybody like that, when they're bringing everybody, there's nobody in underneath coverage. What you need to do is just throw a quick slant, have the quarterback take three steps, get the ball off, and hold defense in his face. You get it out of the receiver. He's got one man to beat. He could go all the way. That's why that kind of defense is a gamble, but you have to be able to throw the ball quick. Two men wide to the left. They send uh, Lopez in motion. Back to passes Gasser. They sack him again. He turned around to throw, and he was sacked by J.T. Tokish. And the Air Force defense has risen to the occasion. And then some. They've really come with a lot of stunts that time. They ran a loop on the defensive on the defensive line. Where one, one defensive lineman loops around the other, and it confuses the offensive line if they're playing man-to-man. -man. Tokish comes around on that loop. And uh, they looped their inside guys to the outside and the outside guys to the inside. And the UTEP line confused and Gasser just getting ready to throw the ball. He had a man open, but no chance before Tokish hits him in the back. Just a moment ago, UTEP had the ball first and 10 on the 20. Now they have fourth and 33. Now that's nine sacks for minus 55 yards. We've got three men wide to the left, only one setback. Gasser back to throw. He ducks away, and he cannot get away. He is sacked once again, this time by Steve Brennan. But that play's not going to count because the official blew that ball dead before the play ever got out. He started to wave his hands overhead and blow the whistle, but uh, nobody heard it because the crowd was kind of loud at that time, but he blew that ball dead before it ever got started. There's a flag down on the sideline. Seems like they've had nine sacks in a row, but not just nine for the game. Yeah, they're really coming after him right now. Let's see what the call is here. Here it is. The illegal procedure on UTEP. So UTEP moved before the snap of the ball and the official blew it dead. So uh, now it'll be fourth and three quarters of a mile instead of just half a mile. Gas are back talking to the one official. Well, the ball is back to the 49 yard line of UTEP. So what are they going to do? say we thought they'd blown the ball dead but right now the uh, ball is back where they where they made the sack is it not you'll, you'll remember that the uh, that the ball used to be on the 20 yard line just just inside the 20 yard line of air force academy now they're back behind the 50 so 30 yards and losses in the last three plays that's right that's right 33 yards to go then fourth and 33 i wait the officials are talking about it right now then i'm not so sure they've got it at the right line of scrimmage there's the penalty situation. Because the uh, down box is back downfield a little ways. They've got to bring the ball back to the and original they, line of scrimmage. They gave them a they gave them a uh, eleven yard illegal motion penalty instead of just five. Dead ball, the illegal procedure on the offense. The whistle was blown before the ball was snapped. It's fourth down again. 
So what they did was they marked it off from the end of the sack and right. they didn't mark it from the original line of scrimmage. You were right, Jay. And so uh, uh, they penalized them 11 yards instead of 5 yards. Right. Now it'll come from the line of scrimmage, the 5-yard walk-off, which will put the ball on the 47-yard line to make it fourth down. Some scores from around the country. Georgia beat Mississippi State 23-6 to today. Army beating Wake Forest 14 to 10. Clemson beat Maryland 31 to 7. Citadel beat Navy 14 to 10. Three men wide to the right, one setback. Gasser back to throw, hoping for some time this time. Throws a prayer downfield, and it is. It is caught for a touchdown. An Air Force player had the ball, tipped it, but Lopez either took it from it or it was tipped right into his hands. And that's one of those uh, Hail Mary prayer throws, and it works for a TV. Unbelievable. I, I could, when that ball was thrown up, I said, there's no way in the world. Let's take a look at it again <laughs> to see exactly what happened. I have to see it again because I can't believe it happened. Yes, it throws it up, and there's good coverage downfield. The, the Air Force defenders running man from out of the free safety right where he's supposed to be. But it slipped through the free safety's hands. Then he taps it up, and Lopez is the guy that's running from underneath. He's, he's the last guy down there. And he just takes it away. Let's, let's look at it from this angle. You can see the free safety and where he's supposed to be. Just taps the ball back, and Lopez, who was trailing the play, and that's the guy that catches it many times after the tap, comes in from behind. He's still juggling the ball, but brings it in for the touchdown. That was one heck of a play, Jay. Air Force Academy 36, UTEP 26, just under five minutes left to play in this football game. Air Force has scored only three points in the second half. The UTEP team all on the sideline huddled around their coaching staff, and they're going to see... Uh, well, certainly they'll go for a two-point conversion. See what they can set up. See if they get the two-point conversion here, and this is what Lee's telling them. We've got to get this because that puts us one one touchdown and a two-point conversion from tying this football game. So uh, they really need this. This is an important time. If they don't get this, then they need two more scores to... It was 33-7 to to at halftime with Air Force leading. But UTEP has really made a ball game of it here in the second half. And Gasser has another TV pass. Three of them. You know, Gasser started out slow the first quarter. You're, you know, he, he didn't look sharp at all. But since that time, boy, has he brought his level of play up. And he's looking like a fine quarterback here in the second half. Well, he had three men wide to the right on that particular play. They all sprinted downfield, and he threw the ball in that direction. Air Force had it well covered. Uh, but they got just what you hope for in a situation like that, that maybe the ball will be tipped around, and then you can grab it. And there's the man, Ricky Lopez, that hauled in that 47-yarder. Like I said, he was the furthest back toward the quarterback. Back. He was the trailing receiver, and many times when that tip goes up, that's the guy that gets the ball, the guy that's trailing the play. Okay, Gasser has the play called, and here they come looking for a two-point conversion right now. They tried it last time they scored, and failed. Three men wide to the right, one set back again. Gasser rolling to the right, looking, throws, caught for the two points. There's a flag down in the end zone. Lopez has caught it. That makes it, uh, wait a minute, there is, a, there is a flag down in the end zone with 4.55 to go here in the football game. They did catch it for the Offensive score. Pass interference. Offensive it's pass interference down. is called. The try is not and so that means it is not good. That means it is no good. So with 4.55 to play, it's 36 to 26. The score remains Air Force leading. UTEP Miners making quite a comeback of it. They're within 10 points now, 36-26. They thought they had a two-point conversion on that last play, but they were caught with offensive interference. And look the way they're lined up with his onside kick. Big pile up in midfield. A little uh, pushing and shoving out there, too, but I think Air Force Academy has the football. They were watching for an onside kick. They had everybody right at the middle of the field. And that was a real poor execution of an onside kick. It seems that the, what's in vogue these days for onside kicks, and there's a look at the scoring drive. Boy, a nice scoring drive with a great play at the end. Six plays, 64 yards, 207. That 47-yard pass to Lopez. What I was going to say, Jay, was that uh, what's in vogue is to kick a drag kick that rolls really slow, send some guys out in front of the ball to knock the return team out of the way, and then recover it because the ball is to go 10 yards. That one, it just kicked out there and let Air Force try to recover it. And they did it on the 44-yard line. First down Air Force, D. Dallas. Calling signals, looks over the defense, may have changed things a bit. Still has the football himself going around the left side and is down to the 40 yard line before he's pulled down from behind. Raymond Hill, the tackler for the UTEP Miners. 
the end of the moving along as quickly right now as it did early in the contest. You tech throwing the ball so much now, playing catch up that uh, whenever that thing completely stops the clock, so it's not rolling like it did in the first three quarters. The game of four, second and six for the Falcons and the Air Force Academy. They'll take a lot of time now. They're going to right up to the about 24 seconds going before they run any play. Dallas. Dallas still with the football again. Slants inside. Has another three yards. Before he's knocked off his feet. And we're down to four minutes left to play in the football game. And of course, you have to win it. They must score twice. You just have to make some adjustments uh, at halftime. They're starting to take the quarterback out of the offense. They have been this whole second half. And, uh, Air Force hasn't been able to break those big plays. Remember the first half, they were getting 10, 12, 15 yards of carry. They were really making them work their way down the field the second half. And in order to do that, you can't make any mistakes. Air Force has made a few. That's why they haven't scored in the second half. They're down in three for the Falcons inside the 40-yard line. Dallas with the ball and still has it himself. Coming in wide, cuts inside and makes the first down yardage. Take the pitch back, kept it, and has it on the first down for Air Force Academy. Each team with, uh, let's see, uh, Air Force has three timeouts left, and Utah has only one. 320 now left to play, as Dallas keeps it and gets a first down. This series has been Dallas left, Dallas left, Dallas right, but uh, you kept making it work for it. He's only getting three or four yards. There's Dallas's stack, 12 rushes for 93 yards and two touchdowns. I'm sure he'd like to break that 100 yard mark. Utah almost jumped offside. They didn't snap the ball, they would have been offside. Here's Dallas with the ball. It gives it up the middle to his fullback, good gear. Rodney Lewis has had quite a football game himself. Gains maybe six yards inside the 30 yard line. With the puck running with 2.45 left to play. Ken Sully, the tackler for Utah. Rodney Lewis is, uh, is a uh, hard runner. Boy, he's really put together, too. I'll tell you, he's, he's a built guy, 6'1", 200, about 210 pounds, and uh, he's not easy to bring down. One guy it has a real hard time bringing him down. Constantini, Lorenzo Constantini is the young man who's injured that they're checking on the field right now. The junior from Houston was a defensive end, moved to nose guard, and then he started at nose guard today, but they made a lot of changes along the defensive line. He comes out of the football game. Second down four for the Air Force. On the UTEP 28-yard line. First down yardage once again. Rodney Lewis. They not only have Dean Dallas, but they've got to have those young men back there with him who are excellent runners. And many people think that uh, this is the best group of backs they've ever had at the Air Force Academy. And you can see that Rodney Lewis never stops those legs from pumping. You can't arm tackle him. You've got to make a good solid hit and then wrap up if you're going to bring Rodney Lewis down. Vernon Cooks tackled him. We have two minutes left to play in this football game. Air Force is ahead 36 to 26. But they've scored only three points in the second half. Moving down in scoring territory there to the 20-yard line of Utah. Dallas with the ball. Gives this time to Johnson, and Johnson just keeps driving forward. Greg Johnson gains uh, about three yards. <laughs> We've got a couple other scores that are of interest from the WAC. Uh, Wyoming ahead of Washington State, 23-21 to in the fourth. And Colorado State and Eastern Michigan are deadlocked at 35 in the fourth quarter. Here's a look at the rush at UTEP. Uh, 27 rushes, minus 39 yards. Air Force has been awesome against the rush. Today. Air Force, 422 yards on 63 attempts. Just under their average. They're, they're averaging over 500 yards a game. That was a, a good uh, show of how you run a time off the clock at the end of the game, too. Dallas keeps the ball, takes it once. There's the pitch back. Out of bounds. That will stop the clock this time. As, of course, Greg Johnson out of bounds. Berman Cooks over there to do it for the uh, Miners. We have a minute and six seconds left in this football game. Air Force has a 10-point lead. And it would appear as if they have a whack win, which would be their third win of the season in whack play. And 4-0 on the season as well. 
Air Force off to a good start this year. They, they have wins over Wyoming, San Diego State, and if they win this one over Colorado State. And it's just uh, as so often happens in the lack of the that's really pointing and looking towards the Brigham Young University and Air Force game, which will be in Provo later this year. That should be a while. Third down, Clay Dallas with the ball, keeping it, keeping it. Uh, he just like to uh, keep that clock going this time. He had a, a trader that elected to keep it himself. Game very little yardage. The clock running with 55 seconds. Michael Bull, there on the stop. UTEP still doing an outstanding job of straining that uh, option out, not allowing D. Dallas to cut up like he's so used to doing. And Looks like uh, see the UTEP is called with timeout. So they've used their last timeout right now. 55 seconds left to go in the game, and uh, El Paso hoping for a big play and a fumble recover or something, but uh, they've got to put two scores up on the board to, to even tie this and touchdown in the, in the uh, field goal. And, you know, Blaine, uh, a little concern shown by the uh, Utah people early in the year of the showing in their first uh, games, even the win over to Mexico City. They, they uh, lost a big lead and had to hang on to win the football game. They could have beaten Lamar, but it made a field goal right at the end of the game. But what's your impression today from what you've seen? Uh, can it be a, I think they can be a good football team. They've got some outstanding athletes. I mean, they've got some real programs. Reggie Barrett out there to wide receiver. There's a great looking prospect. And sort of has got a good arm. But it's a matter of the program adjusting to a new coach. And that takes some time. Brand new coach. They're, they're running a new system on defense. They used to do, um, you know, hit gaps and these kinds of things. And now they're doing a straight ahead, straight up defense. And there's adjustments that need to be made with a new coach, and I think long term it's going to be a very positive thing, and they have the athletes to be a good team. They sure didn't quit in this football game because they were down 25 to nothing, then down uh, 33 to seven, and uh, you know they came back and, and really had a shot at, uh, at catching up to the Air Force Academy. Can I just run out of them? The Air Force put on that great uh, pass rush during the fourth quarter. Here's a fourth down play for the Falcons the Air Force Academy. Fourth down, still made about nine yards. Dallas is back to throw for it. Now throws it over the middle, completes it to the six-yard line, and that is enough for the first down. Catching the ball was Chris Howard. It's almost like he forced that pass down there, but got it there. And D. Dallas had a lot of patience that time. He wanted to go to his outside receiver on the sideline and didn't have him. Then he came back inside. You're going to see him. He's looking out to the sideline here. He wants to go to that guy, and he's very patient. He lets the inside receiver work. See him go to a secondary receiver, finds him, and comes back. A lot of patience and good protection by the Air Force offensive line to allow Dallas to, to go to a secondary receiver and make the completion. Terry Carr. Well, through a key block on that one. There's a run up the middle, and they got a touchdown out of it. A run up the middle to Big Greg Johnson, and you can call him Mr. Touchdown. The designated touchdown runner, you know that if you're going to be hands on you Greg Johnson, chances are he's going to get it in. He just bowled it right in there. That's the first touchdown of the second half for the Air Force Academy. And they have 42 little victims on the scoreboard, while the UTF has 26, and we have 27 seconds left to play. Nothing fancy about this. Just give it to Greg Johnson and let the horses do the blocking, and he'll get it in the end zone for you. Nice play, good offensive surge by Air Force. Here's Joe Wood to try the extra point. He's been perfect so far today. And the kick is good. Oh, he missed one extra point. That's right. Got a couple of field goals, but he did miss an extra point. He kicks this one through to give Air Force the lead now, 43 to 26. And we have only 27 seconds left to play in this football game. And that's not going to hurt. That extra score helps uh, Air Force Academy scoring average. They're one of the top teams in the country in scoring, and uh, and uh, they needed to get over 40 points again to keep that reputation up. And here again, they do it. You know, uh, there was a story here where there's a Heisman watch that are running this year where two voters in each of the five districts are are just casting a ballot as to who they think the favorites would be in the Heisman. So, you know, it gives you a chance to play around with this a little bit. And D. Dallas is number three in that Heisman watch right now. That's right. What's interesting, Jay, is, uh, you know, for many years there, we have running backs running every year. And this year, in that poll, all top three are quarterbacks. They've got Major Harris from West Virginia and uh, Tony Rice from Notre Dame and then D. Dallas. So the top three candidates are, are quarterbacks. And then after that, they've got the, the great running back from Florida, um, Emmett Smith, I believe it is, and, uh, and then another running back. So, but three quarterbacks in the top of that balloting, and D. Dallas uh, doing nothing to hurt his chances. And you're going to see a, you're going to see a real push in this area uh, for Dallas to receive 
credit and recognition. In fact, there's another quarterback in the Western Athletic Conference that will get a lot of recognition, too. There's a short kick. It bounces off a UTEP lineman and is covered then by UTEP in midfield. Scott Mitchell from the University of Utah is getting some uh, push as far as high school or, or recognition that way, too. He's an outstanding quarterback, a real good All-American candidate. Two different styles. Pete Dallas, the running quarterback, runs the show. Scott Mitchell, a straight drop back passer. And they mentioned the publicity in the Air Force Academy. Um, and then there's a look at the Air Force's scoring drive. But the Air Force Academy is uh, really pushing D. Dallas. Just this past week, they sent out a glossy photo section um, saying U.S. Air Force Academy Heisman candidate D. Dallas and tells about his rushing and passing. And so there's a real push for him to win that Heisman and immediate blitz in this area for him. Chris Sullivan is a quarterback now for Utah. And he fires one down the sidelines as they sent three men back deep. And this one is batted around just like the touchdown pass, but it falls incomplete. So Sullivan's a freshman from El Paso in there. Reggie Barrett was downfield. We were talking about to Dallas and Mitchell. There's also another quarterback in the WAC who's leading the nation in total offense. He's a young sophomore at Brigham Young University named Ty Detmer. And you'll hear a lot from him, too. And there are some of the people that uh, make the telecast possible. All the technical people did a fantastic job today. As usual. Made us look good up here, Jay. Well, it'll be second and 10 on the line of scrimmage, the 41-yard line as we run out the string here. Only 16 seconds left to play in the game. Trust Sullivan, the man quarterback, the freshman from El Paso. Had a very good spring, they say. He's a redshirt freshman. Sullivan, back to throw. Good protection this time. Throws it downfield. It's caught on the sidelines. He ran the wrong way. Well, unless he's going for a touchdown, that CA back into the middle of the field keeps the clock going. Three, now they stop it, but he, he could have gone out of bounds and stopped the clock. They're going to try and get the score. Bill just stopped to move the chains and started again. I don't know if they'll get another playoff in three seconds, but he needed to get out of bounds on that to have a shot, but I guess he was just going to go for the end zone. Well, he's going to be the end zone. Randall Gladney tackled him. We'll see if UTEP can get another play underway. They're up over the ball, the officials sort of start the clock. I don't think they'll make it. Well, I guess they just got it just at the last tick. Here's Sullivan throwing for the end zone. He's got a man down there. It's well covered, and it's intercepted. It's intercepted on the last play of the game by Gladney. I think that's uh, good that Gladney, Gladney got it because Gladney has played an outstanding football game. He intercepts on the last play, and Air Force wins it 43-26.